This has been number 40. On the tee, Mark Ramirez. United States Masters champion and the very complete golfer with the game to suit today's conditions. And that's a kindly bounce, just breaking gently to the right. 72-68 and the 72 yesterday in the wind. And Jim Furyk also had a 72 yesterday in the gale. An unusual golf swing. We've all wa wondered at it. Tremendous lift on the back swing, a great loop down on the inside, and then in the sort of aim and Darcy mode with about three feet to go, it becomes very perfect. He's all right. He's a, a few yards shorter than Amira, but he's he may have an awkward stance, but the ball's not sitting too badly. Uh, the pin at the first is 22 yards up the green and just six from the left. Raymond Russell at the third for a birdie. Very stiff looking putting style, but it works beautifully for Raymond. Only 15 more to go. Now, Justin Rose has this for a bogey. He started with two of those yesterday. That's nice. And that was a nice putting stroke. That was the best he could really hope for after the tee shot. Tiger at the third, second shot. Really explodes into the ball. Interlocking grip. And good shot. Really trapped it sharply. Quite a big shot, six or seven iron. Thomas Bjorn played a pretty good bunker shot uh, from that right hand bunker to a yard. And a good putt. And a good par, considering where he put it. On the tee, Justin. Justin Rose. Good rhythm. Well, Justin has just managed to miss me, fortunately, and uh, put himself into perfect position. He's had a good drive there, at least uh, uh, 285 down the fairway. So um, if he can uh, hit that sort of distance, uh, he should be fine for the rest of the round. So the championship leader, Ryan Watts, playing alongside Jesper Parnovic today. Uh, Watts may be an unfamiliar name to you, but I can tell you he's a very experienced player. And he plays a gentle, tidy game. He doesn't appear to get very flustered. And it'll be very interesting to see how he handles it all today. Gordon Huddy, one of the very, many great uh, old players who participate in running this championship. And there is the classic old claret jug. A very handsome trophy. It is indeed. Jesper walks onto the tee. 
Uh, just has those wood stick. It doesn't use head covers, which are f fascinating, these little nuances and things these fellows have. No, no head covers. Jim Furyk with his second shot at the opening hole. It's blind for him, the second shot. He will not see the flag. He's a little bit taller than I am, I know, but I don't think he'll see it from there. A little bit of a mound ahead of him. Slightly awkward stance, the ball below his feet. It's 172 yards to the front and 194 to the flag. 172 usually signifies about a six iron for these players, but it's probably a couple less as the uh, wind freshens and the bounce of the course. It's actually, they've got a good line into the hole, even though he couldn't see the flag. Now, will it release? It does. It'll spring forward, up over the mound, and now curve right. Well, a good shot, and as Beverly says, you get the bounce and the wind, and coming from the rough, it's just drifted to the back of the green. It's just off the edge, but okay. And Omira, good tee shot, just in the semi-rough, a few yards further on, 166 to the front, 188 to the flag. I love this swing. A swing of few moving parts. Beautiful rhythm. And the wrong club, maybe. And that's the problem for the players today. I, I would assess yesterday's wind against was almost three clubs, and today it might be one and a half clubs in the different direction. So very difficult clubbing. Well, Justin Rose, uh, having hit the perfect drive on the second hole, um, has only got 125 to the flag. So this has really got to be a good opportunity for him to try and make up for that uh, bogey on the first. The crowd here is uh, incredible. He's got as many as Tiger Woods, and uh, it's a really lovely feeling out here. Everyone wants him to do well, which is great. Seem to make good contact, and it's certainly online. Probably made too good a contact, really. He just wanted that ball just to release a little bit more, but it's still a good shot. Houston's hit a huge drive here. Uh, Rose is playing partner. It's well over 320 yards and um, really left himself a very fiddly little sandwich, but I think he's played it beautifully. Houston, unfortunately, dropped a shot on the first, but this is an opportunity to go straight back. Tiger Woods on the third. He's there again. Ooh. First tee, Jesper Parnovic there in the black, black and white. A man who's served his apprenticeship in Open Championships, came so close at Turnbury and at Royal Troon. There he is. And I think if he were to win this championship, it would be most popular. I think we all felt for him when he made a little misjudgment at the 18th at Turnbury. Nick Price sneaked past him. And then he just sort of crumbled a little bit over the closing holes. And Justin Leonard uh, just putted himself into the title. Son of a great entertainer, Stepanovic. Just waiting for Ivor Robson, the official starter, the championship, to get them underway. 2.40, the official time. This is it, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the 127th Open Championship. 
on the tee, Jasper Palmovic. That's a very long iron shot. It might just run off the fairway into the first cut. It's okay there. On the tee, Brian Watts. The leader by two at level par. He maintained a beautiful rhythm throughout the, the gale force winds yesterday. And he started off with it again. And that's fine too. Thirty two years of age. And he's bogeyed this opening hole the three times he's played it so far. Mira. And judging that, it'll run on and on and on and on and on. And that's what happened to Tiger Woods. Uh, has drifted on about nine feet past. Cost him a stroke. Justin Rhodes at the second. Looks good. It's a few nice shots now out of the middle of the club face and no sort of strenuous or straining or stressful putts. Jim Furyk now he's going to putt down a little ridge and he can be firm with this as it climbs up the hill. You see how suddenly it came to a standstill there that shows you how the slope and a little bit of breeze against he is always putted with his left hand below his right. It's not something he adapted to improve anything. He has never been a bad putter. From the high camera tower all the way out yonder to the first. Now coming back at the hole, little left to right break. Good putt. So both players commence the round with par fours. And both Amira and Furyk at two over. Tomori. From behind the green at the fourth, found a horrid spot. He's played a very good shot. And uh, well, it just trundled on a little bit. Still not the easiest of tasks to find the greens with the wind having changed so dramatically. Now to the third tee. Justin Rose. A right to left wind. That's the kind the players like. You can use it. And he's done that. Drawn it across the fairway, just off the very edge, but okay. Third hole, 407 yards. To the first. Watts, you can see there, just off the fairway. Well, Brian Watts, yes, just off the right-hand side, Peter. And if he comes in straight at the flag from there, there is a bunker front right. He just needs to be careful about landing in. We see most of the players today have had to land the ball short Watts will have to do exactly the same. 
He may decide just to play it a little bit left of that. Aim at the left-hand side of the green, maybe a touch of cut. And the wind would help it then as well. It would bring it in from the left. But a bit of a flying lie, so maybe just hitting. He's 193 to the front. Two fifty. Yes, two, 193 to the front, so maybe just a six iron. And the flag pretty well, pretty well towards the middle back of the green. Now, what's the nice rhythm here? Oh, we tweaked it a bit. And he needed one more, I fancy. Obviously, it's so important <laughs> to get away to a nice start. And the, the hole is playing so much easier today than yesterday. Just a, an iron off the tee and a six or seven iron, five, six, seven iron. It's pretty big green. Well, yes, for some 23 yards further ahead, he will have maybe just a nine iron for him. He's a very strong hitter, and that extra loft will give him some more control. He should be able to land this, I think, just about on the front and maybe get a little check as well. Not too bad a lie. But that same right-hand bunker does come into play slightly, and that's uh, really what drove Watts over to the left, I think. Good aggressive swinger. Makes a lovely noise when Jesper hits the ball. It really is a... Good old thump. Skies are getting dark out here as well, so I hope we're not due for some rain. Not quite as bad as two days ago. So yes, for a second shot at the opening hole. Well, that, you could see, landed short, got one nice hop forward, so the result pretty good. The wind is freshening, and the forecast is probably a few showers if we go to Tiger Woods. This is the fifth, I beg your pardon, the par three fourth, yeah. and another birdie is recorded. So he's had two birdies, one bogey on his start. Strides off with a great look of determination. Second hole, Mark O'Meara, Jim Furyk, this is O'Meara. just on the front, not so far from the hole. <coughs> Justin Rose just off the edge of the fairway on the third hole here. Second shot, he's got 105 to the front and pins on 24. So I would think it'll be just a nice little wedge down the right side and let the wind bring it back. Hopefully that will hold up. That's a good shot. Stop. Yeah, it's a good shot out of the rough from there from Justin. Uh, Jim Furick, second shot to the second hole. Oh, and it's a good shot. He's a good player. Watts. Well, he played it very well, but at last sort of 10 or 12 feet down this green, this opening green, very fast. That now for a par four. Tiger takes on the fifth. A left to right wind. He's playing a lot of these three-quarter follow-throughs. He spent an hour practicing it yesterday. 
He'll have to go and rebuild his swing when he returns to the United States. Get the follow through back. To the first. Panovic has a reasonable putt for a birdie. He's stuck with this uh, interesting putter. Well, they're prepared for everything, the spectators today. The forecast is blustery showers. But at the moment, and indeed for the last sort of three hours, it's been uh, quite pleasant for golf. Now, Jasper, you ought to just get it over the ridge. Unless he miss hits it altogether, very hard to leave this putt short. Little putter with a barrel behind. The flat face, and that's wandering down. He's done it. No, oh, look. Oh, I thought he'd done it. Now, let's just see how far that's gone by. Oh, just nine inches. I thought he'd done it. I didn't see that missing. I couldn't see it missing. 300,000 pounds first prize here. 188, 135, 96. So you can see a little slip towards the end can be quite costly. This putt to stay two ahead of the field. Oh, pretty smooth, eh? That's the first par he's had at this uh, first hole. He had three fives and a four. Now, whether that's a good omen or not, I don't know. That's a 4-2 for Jesper. Just off the green, just on Rose. No, oh, he's hit that a little bit uh, hard. Brand Jr., for whom uh, I have great admiration, is battling away very well. One under for the day. He'd, uh, he's made some very good Ryder Cup battles. He's a tough competitor. So they're all on their way, and it's been a steady start by most of the leaders. Brian Watts holding that putt for par at the opening hole. Mark O'Meara, Jim Furyk, Jesper Parnovic not dropping any shots thus far, but Tiger Woods with that three putt at the opening hole, or was it a four putt? But he's hit back with birdies at the second and the fourth, and Justin Rose, just the drop shot at the opening hole, and Raymond Russell of Scotland going along so nicely. Four pars and a birdie at the third, and he's five off the lead. Jim Furyk for a three at the second. Break from right, from the left, I beg your pardon. Oh, and you know, he just didn't give it enough. It's, it's fooling everyone. There's such a ridge up there at the high side of the green. Panovic, second. Moves through the ball. Quick rhythm. He slides into it. A very good striker. Second, 421 yards, a little bit of a dog leg to the left, because with the uh, weather early in the year, this rough on the left and right is pretty thick. Bunker in the middle there. That really only comes into play when there's a strong wind against or when the players miss the fairway and are just knocking it up towards the green. That little bunker on the right's caught many out, I can tell you. Now, Mr. Watts is electing to give it the full treatment, I fancy. Tees it up pretty high, doesn't he? Just sweeps it away. And sweep it he did. Just didn't even bruise the tea peg. Oh, now that's... Well, we've seen a few in there. 
Wrong side, really, for where the flag is today. Now, Mark Mira with this putt at the third, just a left to right here. Yes, he read it very nicely. Tiger. At the fifth. Could come back. Well, a touch of good fortune. Gordon Brand at the seventh. And that, oh, and he's playing very well, very comfortable. Nice to see him back on top of his game again. We've missed him for a while. Well, he just qualified at Hesketh, Alec, and he's doing very well as we go to O'Meara. One of the favourites to win today. One of the favourites, really, because of his steady play. He hits pretty straight, very straight, in fact. Got a good rhythm. He's won a number of tournaments in America, but it wasn't until this year he won a big one, the Masters. With Jim Furyk. Now out to the fifth we go to Tiger Woods. He's had two birdies in three holes. This fifth hole, which measures 344. Now, there's a big swing on this one, Tiger, and he looks for his own lines, but I think you can see it here now, from the right. A huge curve to be taken. It's not enough. Just missed it on the low side. Almost got it. If he'd hit it a little harder or just taken a little more borrow. Mm. Justin Rose at the fourth. That's a very lofted club on this 200 odd yard hole. Certainly got the crowd with him. And that's a great shot. Arnovic. Now this is where you see him punch iron shots. From the tees, he's been sweeping them off the pegs. You watch him hit this one. Boom. And that should sit. And that's what makes him so good on the links. The way he attacks down on the ball makes it sit down even when they're supposed to bounce forward. Jim Fury. Good shot. Brian Watts from a, a rough lie. Yes, it is a bad lie, Alex. And coming in from the wrong side, as it were, and five bunkers around the green that uh, he could find, but very well judged. That really was a good shot, and you saw that ball sit down very, very quickly. Nice shot from Watts. Well, he's played eight tournaments in the Japanese circuit this year, finished in the top three on uh, four occasions, winning one of them. Tiger Woods. Just resettling, regrouping on the 16. Now he's got the big driver out. There's a bunker on the right. I feel he might be able to carry that, but this is going to be a big, controlled, furious lash. A divine fury. Yeah, yeah, it's coming right. It's all right, it's all right. 
And that's a big drive, and it doesn't look to be too bad. He was looking to get a little bit of slide on it, left to right, but it didn't come. Justin Rose here's a great shot on the fourth to about 12 feet. Putt goes right to left and then left to right. It's a very makeable putt. But he looks nice and cool and calm. Let's hold it. Very calm. Justin Rose is cruising along. He looks like a, like a duck on water. He's cruising along on the top but paddling like mad underneath, I suppose. But uh, that was a great putt. A uh, stirring from Bobby Jones, possibly. Raymond Russell is at the sixth for a par for Raymond. Nicely done. And they'll be a bit excited at Preston Pans and Long Nidri Golf Club, where he's going along. Marco Mira. Good shot. See, coming in off the slope. You play for the middle of most screens, no matter what anybody says. And particularly when you get them with little rolls and ridges on, you stand just as much if you're aiming in the middle of the green that you're going to get a nice, favourable bounce. Furyk now. He's looking good as well. Both of them at two over. On to the second green. Championship leader, right to left break. He's done it. No, he hasn't. Oh, I thought he'd read that really well. I wonder if he's as placid as he looks, as he appears. Two fours to start. Well, Jesper's caddy has been horizontal on the ground, getting the, the line here. He's pretty straight up the slope. He's at the very highest point of the green, and so he's almost putting straight up towards that. The caddy's having a crack from the other side now. Well, I wonder what they've come up with. Slightly straight, probably. He's quite an aggressive putter. He hit a beautiful putt at the first hole that you might say deserved to go in. This will be positive. No, it died away on the hill at the very end. It needed to be harder. It would have held the line harder. So another four. Final, yes, just there it went. It was straight as a die to that point. So this final group have started with a nice, comfortable pair of fours. Justin Rose. On the fifth. Now he's got to keep, he's got to find the fairways. It may be all right. You can't get away with it all day long. But the good thing is he looks very composed. Now then, Tiger Woods. This is the sixth, this is the tough one, except the wind's gone around a wee bit and reduced it. You can see the flag fluttering there.
Well, it looks like about a four iron or maybe a three. Ah, he gave it a he gave us the follow through there. No punch about that one. Oh, yeah, well. He's now got a nasty little shot. He'll have to call on all his skills to play the third shot. Oh, that'll be like that'll be a nightmare of a chip. Furyk. Ramirez got a par. Furyk's putt dribbles away, just short of pace. Uh, the putt we saw Panovic miss, he gestic gestured that it went away to the right, but that was only really because it didn't have enough beef to sort of run it into the hole. And here is Jesper at the third. Two bunkers up the right here, most of the players keeping away from that using the left hand side and that's a good shot uh, he's I was just about to say it's it's really sad to see so many iron shots from tees and uh, it seems to be part of the modern game they can hit it so far now but Brian Watts has taken his three his metal three and watch how slowly he appears to go through the ball at the base at the strike Almost slows the pace. There's the back of the bunkers I referred to. And here he is. That's very nicely placed. Ah, the temperature's changing. Now, oh, has he got a slip over? He's taking the pullover off. I think he's got a slip over to go on. A little cardigy. Temperature's pretty. It's pretty nice. In fact, it's beginning to brighten up. There's some bits of blue sky around. Very gracious player he is. Well mannered. Yes, it's warming up in every sense. It's tight and it's tense, but Brian Watts's two-shot lead remains over Marco Miro, Jim Furyk, and Jesper Parnovic. Justin Rose getting his round going again with that splendid birdie at the fourth, and Tiger Woods after his problems at the first, birdies at the second and the fourth. But that incident with Tiger Woods at the first, that sort of stuttering putt for a bogey five, well, you recall uh, what happened, and... Uh, uh, we posted a few question marks over it at the time. And it certainly did look worthy of examination. And the gentleman of the RNA asked to see the incident and came into our videotape operation, the secretary of the RNA, Sir Michael Banalek, and Hugh Campbell, the chairman of the RNA Championship Committee. And they had a long, hard look at it. And eventually the verdict was that it was OK. No problems, and Tiger Woods is four over par, and that is official. Raymond Russell, five over par after six holes, and uh, what a terrific round he's having. A young man who's had a difficult season. He's missed something like 12 cuts out of 14 tournaments after finishing in the top 20 in Europe last year, but he's five off Brian Watts' lead. Rose at the fifth, second shot. Well, there's some lukewarm applause. It's on the front of the green there. Long way away. Uh, Mark Amira at the par three, at the fourth. And he always twirls the club as he releases it from the follow through when he's pleased with the shot. And that was straight at it. Four, 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 he started and the putt for a two. Keeping even numbers, he won't do too badly. No decisions have been made. Mr. Nice. Nice firm shot. He's got quite a few yards between the front of the green and the flag. If he can land it about halfway, 
with the ball not landing in too much with too much fire behind it should be okay Well, that started right. Well, he's got lucky. He's got very lucky there. It started way right. That must have been a big slingy hook from such short range. That's not good. The result's OK, though. Uh, there's the shot I referred to. Tiger Woods onto that mound. Let's see how he does it. Well, I can tell you there were about 17 different ways of playing that shot. None of them was going to get it very close. Not unless you hit the pin. That's Justin Rose, two putts on the fifth. Those are very crucial putts. It's so easy to miss them. Now Brian Watts at the third. His starts out right because there is a right to left wind at the third. And that's a good shot. Fjord from the bunker and that stopped. Well, almost too well for him as Brian Watts ball did on the last. So Bruin with his quirky swing. Takes me back to the mighty Irish player James Bruin and more recently Eamon Darcy who had their own little special ways of hitting the ball. Bruin was, there we are, the old bunker rakers are out. They're very good. Green keepers have come from far and wide to be part of this great show. Association known as Bigger. Willie Whitelaw, Viscount Whitelaw has just retired as president. May still be just in office, I'm not absolutely certain, but he took over from me, you know. <laughs> ah, Willie. Now, Tiger Woods, this is a most important putt at the sixth for his par. <gasps> and the second shot, it was a misjudgment with the second shot. He was up the bank at the back. In the wrong place he was. Hmm. Lee Westwood. This is Lee Westwood. Came here with such high hopes on the 18th. Took eight at the 17th. Birdied the six. Finished seven, three, eight, four. Seven at the 15th, then a three, and an eight. Home in 41 for a 78. Well, uh, all a learning process, eh? A learning process. This is Mark O'Meara, and this is at the fourth. The, this is for a two. So there you are. He's kept an even numbers, four, 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 and a two. And he's under par, and he's just one off the lead major threat R Raymond Russell knocking in his par putt on seven five over the championship going along very nicely indeed now the championship leader Brian Watts this is his third shot running it up the hill it's quite a steep rise that's what stopped his iron shot and he's left himself at least four feet he knocked one a bit past at the first hole and then he put one of the smoothest strokes when he must be under tremendous pressure
A lot of players do not like to change the, the gear, the, we the sweater that they're wearing at the opening hole, but he has done, as we go to Jim Furyk, this for a par, and a mistake, a very big mistake. He's dropped his first shot of the day, poor tee shot into that bunker, and a great recovery. Yes, Papanovic. At the third. This is for Birdie. Pretty good effort. Just went down the left hand side of the hole up. Justin Rose unleashes one at the six. Now he got up here in two yesterday when the wind was absolutely at its worst, and uh, that was a great hit. Tiger Woods. Seventh hole. It's been his trademark this week, just punching everything into the into the uh, greens, and he's got lucky again. He's come back off something into a little hollow at the back of the green. And the change of wind is causing havoc with judgment of clubbing. Now Brian Watts, who came up short at the third, has this for his par. Nicely done. He seems to do everything in slow motion, even his putting stroke, even his iron shots. So, so, well, it's amazing when you do hit a ball slowly how well it comes off the club face. Thrashing about doesn't do anyone any good. Marco Mira. Iron for safety on the fifth. He really is the most beautiful swinger of a golf club. Technically, I think he's perfect. Jesper, little putt here. <laughs> oh, you got to laugh. It's amazing how they nearly get away. Strangely enough, that, that might just help him. You might think, well, I got lucky there. I, I could have been worse. Get, let's get on with it now. <laughs> well, we continue in hope that the, the weather will pick up. The temperature is certainly a little milder, but uh, the sun is still to come out. As we move on to the fifth tee. We have Jim Furyk. Again with iron, just going for safety. He has a most unusual grip, Jim. He, instead of just one little finger overlapping, he has two fingers overlapping. He likes to uh, keep very tight on the club. And Russell, this is at the eighth hole. He's had one birdie and the, the rest pars. And this hole, 457 yards and uh, against a little right to left breeze. Only one birdie today at this hole. Takes, picks a spot ahead, keeps looking at it. Then he straightens up as though he's come off the shots, and you think this has gone right. On this occasion, it has. <laughs> he straightens up off. In fact, he's playing now with Rocca, who's another one who straightens up off shots. The right shoulder comes up very early. <laughs> Ninth hole, Gordy Brown Jr. My best man at. Uh, my wedding, and I was best man at his wedding, so uh, what a putt. Fantastic. Go on, smile. Give us a smile. There's a go. Now, this is Parnovic's ball at the fourth, the short fourth, right at the flag. And uh, the wind behind there, just stopping it from checking. 
It's a good shot, right over the pin. Now then, Tiger Woods hitting a little three-wood. Most unusual shot for uh, amateurs to see, but it's more, becoming more and more popular with the pros. Off tight lies. Yes, it's very difficult to duff it, isn't it? You can't get the sharp end of the club to stick in the ground. So it always sweeps along rather like a barge. The club aimed at the hole, stand behind. Lee Jansen used to do that. Stand behind, aim the club at it. And it does help with your lining up. Although he's having adjusted the ball, he's sort of lost that magic bit. He always has an open stance. Feet are aiming 10 degrees left. Lovely slow rhythm. And that's a nice solid iron shot. Two hundred and three yards this uh, fourth hole. The wind behind on this occasion. The wind has gone completely around. It's, uh, it's from the south southeast. It's been blowing in from the west all week, and so judging the club for the players uh, who spent all of the week practicing and against, and they now find it with on some holes. John Houston, second at the sixth hole. Going with long iron, had to be very careful with the lip of that bunker because it's only 10, 15 yards in front of him. And that's a pretty good shot, bit lucky there, but he'll take that. Now then, Justin Rose is a little bit nearer the, the bunker, and he has to be a little bit more careful. You can just about see the top of the flag from where he is. Beautiful setup. Very square. I don't know whether he's gone left. Good shot. Very good shot from Justin. He's looking a very complete golfer now, learning all the time. To the fifth, Furyk, a green that will hold. His second shot. This should stop. It's one of those inviting greens. It's sort of gorse all around the background there. You can see what I mean. He's coming in a little bit more from the left. Not such a nice background, but he knows it'll sit. This is Amira's second shot, sand iron. And that's going to sit too quickly. Back at the fourth green, Brian Watts. Surveying this putt for birdie. He's picking a f bit of debris off the line of his putt. Now Tiger Woods has... Well, he's got a putt. He's got up with a chip and a putt there, Tiger Woods. That's at the seventh hole, a par three. So he's level for today. Brian Watts. We saw him taking uh, debris from his, uh, the line of his putt, which he is entitled to do. And also in this championship, you can touch the line of your putt with your putter, which on the European Tour and most other tours, you're not allowed to do. And you can actually have a practice putt after you've holed out, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like tennis this game, you have two hits at it. Uh, he thought, oh, it's gone a long way past. Four feet. 
Testing little time for uh, Mr. Watts. Raymond Russell, we saw him in the bunker. And he's recovered very nicely. So another par is recorded at the eighth hole. Good recovery bunker shot that was. Back to the fourth with Jesper. This is for birdie. Just seeing the head came up a bit and it sort of almost came out of his putt there and he's pushed it to the right. Just a bit anxious to see if the ball's gone in the hole. Jim Furyk who can uh, try and make amends for the shot he dropped at the short hole. This is for a three. This is the fifth. That's better. One bogey, one birdie. Now then, back at the fourth, Brian Watts. This is for par. He ran that first putt four feet by. First mistake of the day. And he goes back to one over for the championship and then a tie with Marco Mira. So there is nobody at par or better. Parnovic just tidying up there. He stays at two over. And it's all getting very tight at the lead at top of the leaderboard there. And there is the leaderboard at the, the bottom of your screen, and I'm sure as the story flashes up around the course there'll be many interested onlookers Justin Rose putting at the sixth and so Brian Watts has come that much closer to the mall Justin at three over Mark O'Meara on the fifth That was earlier. And he makes his four and walks on to the walks his way to the the next hole. Uh, Raymond Russell only four shots behind the leader. T shot at the ninth, and today they can cut loose with woods. Up came that shoulder again. This time trying to make a little bit of fade on it, deliberately fade it, and that's what he's done. That's a beautiful shot. This 411 yarder, totally blind tee shot. Jim Furyk, sixth tee. That's a perfect drive. Absolutely, position A1. It all looks to calm, doesn't it, when you get yourself tucked down behind uh, the branches there. Parnovic on the fifth tee, the hole that measures 344 yards. Let's have a look at it. You drive out of a gully, and you can all see there's no, there are no bunkers to catch the tee shot, and... Uh, it does turn a wee bit in dog legs to the right. The wind is left to right, so you could actually play a nice sliding fade. And then the big pot bunker at the front, Jasper takes, Jasper takes an iron. I 
think that's a tidy looking shot. Doesn't want to run out of ground at the end of the dog leg, and he doesn't. You get a real view from there of the, the shape of this hole. Pretty flat lying. Now, his watts. I wonder how he'll be affected now. Uh, he's drifted along in the lead for a considerable time, slept on it. And suddenly, by a mistake, a little aggression with the first putt, he's no longer the outright leader. Still kept a slow strike speed. And I think that's okay. Yes, it is. That's fine. That's fine. Brad Faxon at the seventh. This is for par. Six over for the championship. Well, you don't see that very often. That's unfortunate for Brad. Just gone bogey bogey. Two over for the day. Now this is John Houston at the uh, par 3 seventh. They built a new tee down to low and left uh, away from the old one. The course has been increased a little in its length, so a new record here, 65. There's the tee over there, in line with that tower. John Houston, level par today, five over. He's one who had a 65, so he and Tiger Woods share the record. Justin Rose's 66 would be the amateur record as we go quickly to the eighth to Tiger Woods. He's obviously uh, hit the perfect tee shot down there. And a perfect second shot. Fantastic shot by Tiger Woods there. Looked a really good swing. It's a certain birdie for him. Wearing red and black as I predicted he would. To, he wears that to become uh, the red's an aggressive colour. Now then Raymond Russell at the ninth. Sort of valley in front of the green. And that is up on the top level. He's used to playing to plateau greens. Long Nidri Golf Club is sort of renowned for them. Turned basins. Nice golf course there. Mm. So he's a very good player in the wind. Justin Rose at the seventh. And he's just pushed that in the bunker. Brian Watt's second shot at the fifth. Downwind. This is a two-tier green, being cut 29 yards on today. Must pitch it about 120, and that'll be on the top tier. Mustn't be too aggressive, there's trouble over the back. Just hitting a short iron in, so control should be there. Touch right of the pin. Now, will it spin back? It has done. A severe elevation at the back of the green up onto the top level. That ball reacted away from it. Now he's got a testing putt, and I'm pretty sure all around the leaderboards have shown, especially Tiger Woods would have seen it. Jim Furyk, second shot at the sixth. And a kindly bounce again, just coming in off that left-hand front side there. 
Well, a very similar shot for Jesper Parlovic, I should think, just a sand iron for him. Very short shot, downwind. And he would have seen what happened to Watts' ball. Left of the pin is a little bit safer. It's a little flatter there. And that's big. Yeah, off the back, not in any great trouble, but a very tricky little chip shot left. Now Mark Amira, second shot at the sixth, and he can get there. Looked like a good three iron. Oh dear, oh that is awful. That is terrible. Just plummeted in and look what's between him and the pin. Gordon Brown Jr. at the tenth for birdie. That's another one. Gordy's on a roll. Out in one under. Starts back with a three, two under for the day. Right in the thick of things now. Uh, to seventh, uh, John Houston. Just a little chip and run over the bank. And continuing to run on. Houston there and uh, Justin in the bunker. Uh, Justin Rose, this is uh, from a slightly damp bunker, which gave him a bit of control. And that shot was recorded. Massive galleries everywhere as we go to the ninth. Raymond Russell. Birdie attempt on the ninth. Raymond has a beautifully smooth putting stroke. And just shave the left hand side of the hole there. Now Jim Furyk has just come up short. Uh, uh, he's debating on uh, the kind of shot to play here because the little mound that you can see between him and us as you're looking at it is a little higher than it appears. And I think he's electing to get onto the green. <coughs> That's nicely judged. Beautifully played. He eliminated the bank, but I don't think Amira will be able to do that. Well, you're quite right, Alex. Uh, he's certainly not going to be able to do that. Um, having played such meticulous golf uh, for the first five holes, um, Amir is in dire trouble here. He's got a steep bank. He's lying badly. He's got the uh, little mound in front of him. Um, and to be honest, I think he's going to do well just to get it on the green. Furyk, of course, has played a good shot. And um, in some respects, uh, these two could be putting pressure on each other because I think they're everyone's favorite for the uh, championship. So this could be a very critical uh, turning point in the uh, whole championship. It was at this hole yesterday where he got away up on a bush on the right and had all sorts of uh, discussions with rules officials before he was uh, eventually allowed to drop the ball. But that was almost an impossible shot, as Gary Wilsonholm described. Justin Leonard, this is for par. Justin Rose, I beg your pardon. Unlucky there, just pushed it to the right. Brian Watts coming up the slope, a huge break, right to left. That's his third shot. He's read it well. <laughs> well, he three putted the last, and we all thought panic would set in. Instead of that, he's come back with a smart birdie. And he's suddenly out on his own again, and Mark O'Meara, his nearest rival, is struggling. Now then, Parnovic from off the back. And that's amazing the way that ball reacted. It hopped and skipped. 
and then slow it down. So unless Amira chips in, we have uh, Brian Watts back in the lead in the championship on his own. At least by one shot and probably by two. Marco Mira on the sixth. Uh, he's chipped up to there. Little four, four and a half footer left. Uh, this is for bogey. Very important part this. There's always a key moment in any round and this could be it. Very good, good solid putt. True champion that. Jim Furyk, now this is for par. Doesn't have a practice swing on his putting. Just goes straight into it and pops it in. Now Parnovic with this yard putt for a par at fifth. Nicely hold. Parnovic stays at two and two behind his partner. So Brian Watts' two-shot lead with which he started the day is now restored, courtesy of his own birdie at the fifth. And Mark O'Meara's problems, that drop shot at the sixth. Tiger Woods, meantime, continues his spectacular progress. He tapped in that short putt that he had at the eighth for birdie after the spectacular approach. So he's back to four over par with Justin Rose and also Gordon Brand Jr. with those birdies at the ninth and the tenth. Well, he's just a shot behind them at five over par. And also five over, Raymond Russell. And Davis Love has got his round going again with a birdie at the 10th. He's parred the 11th. Six over par, Davis Love. And the group of players on seven over include Rocker, Bjorn, Brad Faxon, John Houston, Peter Baker. Steady stuff from Peter Baker today. Out in 34, and he's parred the five holes since then. Nick, Nick Faldo finishing off, hopefully. At 18. Well done. It's always typical. You hold the last one. You miss everything else. You hold the last. Now, Palnovic taking on the, the sixth with a metal three. Still not risking a driver. That's gone right. That is a way. Oh. That is a way. He's missed the fairway by 20 yards. Unfortunately, he didn't make it to the spectator footpath. Now, here it is. It's been the toughest hole of the lot, 480 yards. And uh, he's away over there now. That bunker you play up short of, and you can get home with, the, with an iron if you're really powerful. The ground rises up to the two bunkers on the right and a little bank on the left. And up there, you can see... Yesterday, Amira was in the shrubbery on the right. Today, up on that bank. Tiger Woods on the ninth. He's missed the fairway on the right. Doesn't look a very inviting lie. See how he flexes his knees trying to get to the bottom of the ball. And nearly falls over. That was a superb shot from there. Shows the strength of this young man. Very, very hard, quick hand speed. Justin Rose here on the eighth has pulled his tee shot left. It's a totally different hole today. It's into the wind and they're hitting drivers. He's pulled it left onto the walkway. He's got a nice tight lie, but he's got a uh, blind second shot over the banks. 200 to the front, and the pin's on 17. So 217, he's got to get it up over about eight foot of hump, I would say. So he'll do uh, very... He's still lining the shot up now, trying to get a line on it. 
I would think uh, he'd do extremely well to get this one on the green. Now Jim Furyk takes on the seventh hole. He had his only hiccup at the other short hole, the fourth. No mistake this time, the heart of the green. In the middle of the green, you're never much more than five or six yards from the pin. That is Brian Watts on the right there. Now then back up to the seventh tee to Amira. Sharing second spot. Get down, he cries. Oh, hit the bank at the back, I think. Yeah. And then collided with the cameraman. Okay, he's got a good lie. Part of it, as we saw from the tee shot, pushed it way right and has uh, a blind second shot. Ball not lying terribly well, and he's got uh, just over 200 yards to the front of the green. Now, should he miss Q, the mounds in front are about 30 feet high. The dunes there is dunes we have out here, and he could come a right old cropper in those. So he's got to be a little bit careful. Uh, he is a very, he's a very, very strong hitter of the ball. But uh, meanwhile, Brian Watts first to play. Watts drove into a very good position down the left-hand side of this fairway. 215 yards left to the front, out with his three wood. A little bit of breeze helping from the left. Quite a good club to hit on this hole and get it running up, but that's going a touch left, but it's long enough to clear that nasty dune on the left that's Many players were in yesterday, and wonderful shot again from Watts. And the good gallery here are going to learn a lot about how to swing a golf club watching this chap. Justin Rose is playing an iron for his second shot on the eighth. It's come out very low, bit thin. It's gone to the right side. It's gone 30 yards short of the green on the right, but it was a very difficult shot. Well, I think the dropping the shot at the last hole just got him a little anxious, a pulled tee shot, and he actually thinned that iron shot. He was so fortunate to find himself on the footpath, but he hit it right off the bottom of the club. Well, Mark O'Meara on the seventh, it's 177-yard uh, par three, and uh, he overflew it. Um, the wind's slightly different from yesterday, obviously, but he got a big break, hit a cameraman, didn't go into the crowd, and actually got a reasonable lie. So Tiger Woods on the seventh, on the ninth, my apologies. Rolling on and on and on. But it's not a bad judgment from there, but still a tricky par putt for Tiger Woods. Well, Parnovic went up onto the mounds and had a second look at this. He's probably exhausted by now. and. Uh, to add to his woes on the right hand side of the screen, the side he's coming in over, are a couple of quite deep bunkers. So you may see him play this just down the front left into the dip for safety. As I say he's a terribly strong hitter of the ball. He would need in the region a maybe a four iron to get there, but so he's slightly miscues. Those mounds await. Well, that's gone slightly right. But that's just short of the bunkers, so I, I think that's what he aimed to do. I think it was too much to expect to get to the front, so very sensible play from uh, Parnovic. Jim Furyk, right across the green here, pretty level putt at the seventh hole. That's for a two.
just chose to hit it a little bit right. Nothing happened to it. So on the tenth hole with Raymond Russell. Needs to get up that hill. That was for a birdie. Didn't quite make it. Ran out of steam. Justin Rose here has got uh, his third shot on the eighth. He's got the grass growing with him. The only shot he's really got is a lobber to get it up in the air quick. And unfortunately, it's gone a bit far, but that was the only option he had, really. Now, Tiger Woods, just look how far that first putt ran away to the left. But he gets it in. So he's under par going out. He's 33 out. He's had a couple of bogeys included in that. So he knows he's still in the hunt. As we go to Mark Amira on the seventh. Has he read this? No. So that's a shot dropped. So that's the second one in a row for Amira. So he needs to regroup. Raymond Russell at the tenth, having a nice championship. One under par today, five over for the event. Just five behind the leader. If you could just get one of those magical runs that you dream about. Uh, the, the last the two par fives, the only two par fives on the course come at 15 and 17. And although the wind is uh, certainly not as favorable as it was yesterday, there's always a possibility of birdies. So back at the sixth with Jesper Panovic. You saw him hit his second shot out of the hay up to here. And that really was a, a good shot. It was the best he could do in the circumstances and given himself a good chance to use as much of the length of the green as possible to go straight up at the flag. What a beautiful shot by Parnovic. That was just very nearly pitched in, but it's a very good shot and he can get away with it. It was a poor drive, but uh, there we go. Marvellous how the roars of the crowd echo across, uh, across the course when things happen. Here's Furyk at the seventh for his three. Oh, he rattled that one. So Jim uh, Furyk at two over lies, well, he shares with uh, Parnovic at two. These are the only two sharing second place now. Mira's dropped out of that. And we go to the eighth with Justin Rose, trying to hold this putt to save par, but he's not going to, and he's going to have a real tricky one to drop just one shot. So he's four over at the moment, and we don't want any more shots dropped at this stage. This sixth green. And the championship leader there, Brian Watts, giving it the plumb bob, trying to see just exactly which way the slope comes from. He's coming a bit downhill, and he's going to aim out to the left. Don't let his stance uh, fool you. He's got a very much a Fred Couples type stance. He aims always 10, 15 degrees left of everything, but he's still nevertheless a left to right putt. Not high enough. It was a brilliant second shot that he played. It was worthy of a birdie. So John Houston on the eighth. This for a birdie. Get his round going a bit better. Come on. Yes. Great putt by the American. That certainly helped his cause a great deal. So 
So Justin Rose on the same green. I wonder if that helped him at all. Yeah. Good boy. Very well done. That was the best he could do in the circumstance, but two shots dropped in two successive holes, and he goes to five over. Well, wouldn't this be a, a at the sixth, a very good par? Well, it would have been. It would have been a very good par, a great recovery, great pitch, and how that hurts Sparnovic. First shot is dropped, and you can see it in his eyes. There's so much at stake. On the ninth. And Justin giving it a bit of welly up there. Justin Rose on the ninth here. Hit it, uh, his tee shot, just about where I hit mine in about 1991. At least he's still walking, but uh, I've been on this tee four times this week and I still haven't found the other half to my leg, so anyone finds it, hand it back to Richard Boxall, please. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't remember, I did break it on the ninth, unfortunately. But I'm back to normal, walking again. Back to normal, eh? I'm not so sure about that. Of course, the gentleman, there's the, there's the man himself. And, uh, of course, the man who attended to him that day was Peter Rostron, who is the current captain of the club. And he just so happens to be in the medical profession, the right man at the right time to help Richard. So we go to Tiger Woods. Study and concentration. Under par going out. Uh, he lies within four shots. This is a dog leg. This hole it turns into the wind yesterday, but with the wind today, it's totally different. He dropped a shot yesterday into the breeze. Now, will that spin? Yes, just a bit. I wonder if we're going to see one of those Tiger Woods charges. Well, it's interesting, Alex. Nobody's moving, making a move towards Brian Watts, who's playing very steadily, and uh, you'd have thought at this stage they might have had a crack at him. As we go to Raymond Russell on the 11th. This is played as difficult almost as any hole on the course, this 11th, and the tee pin today in a really difficult position, and Raymond's hit an excellent shot. Very, very long green. It's uh, 35 yards long, so it's a lot of ground to cover. Brian Watts at the seventh. And this pin, of course, cut tight into the left-hand bunkers. Centre of the green would be ideal. And that's pretty safe. He mustn't uh, do anything too exciting or too damaging at this time. That's very sensible play. Mark Amir on the eighth has uh, not had a particularly good drive. He's got a hanging lie. He's going to be standing above the ball. The ball's not lying too badly, and he's got an approach to uh, the pin, which is tucked on the right-hand side as he looks at it. He's still got uh, 195 yards to the pin, so it's uh, quite a long way. Well, well, Gary, you probably can't see that, but he got very fortunate, came off the right-hand slope on the right-hand side of the green and came down almost onto the edge of the green, so a really good break for Amira. Uh, Parnovic is on the seventh. And this ball he's got down tight into the ground, so I don't think he's going to pick this one off the top. This will be a punch. <laughs> that looked to be around about a, a six iron. Oh, it's a great shot. It's a great shot. He took a club short and gave it a bit of a clip there, going for backspin. It's the only reply to dropping a shot.
Well, Jim Furyk, uh, who's playing with Marco Mir on the eighth hole, has uh, hit a perfect tee shot. He's only got 170 yards to the front edge. And, um, you know, really, he's got a relatively straightforward shot here. Having seen O'Meara's ball, I think uh, that'll give him some confidence that he can get a uh, good shot in here. Seems to be online. It's just whether it's going to hop up. Well, hop up it has, Garrett. But it's gone just a little to the left of the flag and he's given himself quite a long putt. The on safely. Justin Rose, a mighty tee shot at the ninth. You can see the flag fluttering to the left. Stayed beautifully with that shot. You usually do when you've topped one at the previous hole. Now, come on. Got a little bit pumped up there through the back, but it's okay. What a terrific championship he's having. It's really marvellous, isn't it? Not 18 years of age. Time, time for a sweetie. So ahead on the tenth green with Tiger Woods. I saw that wonderful second shot which screw back down the hill. And his putt is downhill, obviously. Question of reading it. I think it might come a little bit from his left, but not a huge amount. But he's studying this with great care. There's, uh, he thinks that he's still in there with a shout and he's going to give it his best shot. Only four behind, and holding this would bring him one shot nearer. What a shame. It's just too hard. He likes to give the putts a good old rap and uh, often pays the penalty for that. So what might have been is just a straightforward par four and leaves the young man at four over. All the way to the 18th, Jose Maria Olatabal who's 10 over. And the four for 70. No, oh, and three for 69. So Brian Watts on the seventh for a two. He must have thought he had that. Very near to the hole, it looked pretty good. Now Gordon Brand, five over. Second shot to the 13th, this 498 yard par four. <gasps> Oh, that's nasty. He's playing so well, just dragged it into that pot bunker. So the aerial view of the seventh green. That looks smart, all surrounded by these seven bunkers. And it's going to be Jasper Parnovic. Good putt. So he's back in the game again. Only two behind Brian Watts. Very good tee shot and an excellent putt by the Swede. To the eighth, Marco Mira. That's better. That's better. He gets a, a birdie. He's back to level par today. Two of each.
So Jim Furyk on the eighth. Oh, I just needed a little bit more, and that was home and dry. And Justin Rose putting down from the bank, and that's a very good putt. It, at first, it looked as if it was going to be halfway. That's uh, where we saw Tiger Woods' ball accelerate. And we go quickly to the 18th. This is for a 69. Three others have broken 70 today. And Ola Thabal, to the pleasure of the galleries, there it is. Robert Allenby, Justin Leonard, Sven Struver, and Jose Maria have broken par. But Brian Watts, well, he's still two shots clear, but the others are gathering behind him once again. Marco Mira with a birdie at the eighth. Jesper Parnovic after the drop shot at the sixth, birdieing the seventh. And Jim Furyk going along nicely as well. They're all just two shots off Brian Watts's lead. And Tiger Woods missed the chance of a birdie at the tenth, so he stays four back. And then the British challenge is all gathered at five over par. Gordon Brand Jr., Raymond Russell, and Justin Rose as well, all at five over par. Justin having to regather his game after those drop shots at the seventh and the eighth, par the ninth. And uh, at six over par, Davis Love there with John Houston and Jose Maria Olazabal in with his round of 69 and the 69 of Robert Allenby as well today. Raymond Russell at the 12th hole. This hole will be playing completely different than it has done for the last few days. And he gets a very favorable bounce off that little sand hill on the right there. And that could get him back at a hunt too. This tee at the eighth is a, the closest uh, piece of the course to the sea. You see the road, the coast road running along there. That car's on its way towards Liverpool. And uh, Jesper's decided to take the big one, the driver. He hasn't had it out of the bag today. It's been irons and three woods. So he's going to have a crack at this. 457 yards, this hole. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Up in the cabbages, up there on the left-hand side, uh, got into the green bit, didn't get the slide he expected. And you can see that's them passing over the normal tees now. And there's a pot bunker there on the left. He's past that, but he's up into that grassy bank. Probably didn't want to get across there into the water hazard. 457 yards. And the wind today a bit from the right to the left. Now then, Brian Watts, United States, plays all of his golf in Japan. Now that's a big club head, isn't it? A lovely, quiet rhythm, and I think that ball is well on its way up the fairway. And there you are, you can see them away back up on the tee yonder in front of the sand dunes and a long walk to get to the fairway. So we're on to the 11th hole with Tiger Woods. It's hit a huge drive up here. It's just a wedge. Screaming for it to cut. And you can see why, because he's popped in behind that dune there. As it may have spun back. Now to the ninth, Amira to cut the corner. And they like it. It goes over the man on the top of the hill with his flag. And everyone would like that one. It'll be a wee while before he gets over the top to see what he's done, but he knows it's on the fairway. And now uh, uh, Furyk takes a medal three, stands with his feet outside the teeing area. You're allowed to do that as long as the ball's inside it. Tried to play a little cut there. Hope it hasn't been overdone. Yes, it has. Oh, and he didn't get in the dry bit. Settled in the dark bit. There's a difference, you see. 
where the water runs down. If you get on the dry stuff, it's not so bad. Very interested in his grip, Alex, these two overlapped fingers. It's very unusual, isn't it? Well, big Russell Clayton, I think, uh, from Cambridge, he, he does that. He overlaps about four of them, I think. <laughs> and uh, old Harry Bradshaw, I remember, and before you were around, uh, Mike, in the olden Thank days. You, Alex. Bradshaw had about a, a four-knuckle overlap. It was quite incredible. So Raymond Russell on the 12th. Saw that tee shot coming off the sand dune on the right-hand side there. It's going to move a little bit. I think probably from his right. Oh, goodness me. Just at the last minute. A very good try. He believes in five over. How much sweeter four would have been? Well, Jim Furyk here has uh, found the right-hand rough, and he's got um, a fairly reasonable lie. The difficulty he's got is that uh, he hasn't got much green to work with between the front edge and uh, the pin. But the weather is starting now to uh, uh, deteriorate slightly. It looks as though it's going to uh, sort of rain bank or something is going to move in. And it's quite unpleasant, although not cold. Furyk has uh, 160 yards to the front edge, and then uh, another... Uh, 10 or 15 yards onto the flag itself. He can't really make his mind up what he's going to do here. I don't know whether he's trying to pitch it short and run it up or try and pitch it on the green and let it just release out to the flag. Probably going to be hitting something in the region of a six iron here. Looks as though he has punched it forward and it looks as though it's going to run up, but uh, it's this very steep bank at the front there. Well, there you get an idea as the rain spots start to hit the lens of the camera and the sky, as Gary was mentioning, and deterioration on its way. Let's hope it doesn't become too serious or bring any strong winds with it. Parnovic at the eighth. It looked a pretty good live for Jasper, but it needs to chase on, I suspect which it has nearly done. And that was a very good shot out of there. That was a, a miserable place to end up and uh, played an excellent shot. Uh, Justin Rose. And that looked like a nice solid hit. He's become very solid the last couple of holes. And that should react and spin. And that's a very fine iron shot from Rose, who was out in 36, two over par. It's a mighty tough par, Royal Birkdale, for 70. As we go to Mark Amir on the ninth. Well, that's not a bad shot at all. A sprinkler there, which may interfere with his putt, or the line of the putt, which we'll see shortly. But he's going along not badly at all, really. Just two behind. He really does want to start making some impression. It's a day of being patient. Brian Watts, championship leader, second shot to the eighth. You've seen the pin. Just five yards from the right is the pin. Has he pulled it away from there? Yes, he has a little bit, but mustn't be too greedy. This would not be a time to get greedy. Sandy Lyle on the 16th. Oh, what a sweet shot from Sandy. Oh, 
tiger. Here at the 11th, what kind of putt have you got here? Up over the ridge, against the edge of the green. He's got to come off the green, you see. What a putt. What a putt. Oh. It's not inviting when you have to putt off a green to get back on it again. So Jim Furyk here on the ninth. Well, hopefully he can make that, but he's given himself a little work to do. A little errant drive. Oh, and a putt there that just slid by the hole at the 10th, Rose. That would have made a tremendous difference to the young fellow's uh, performance if he'd got a birdie there. He's had a couple of bogeys in the last three holes. And it gets a bit grayer. The wind has stayed uh, comparatively calm. It was gusting up to 40 miles an hour yesterday, but today it's about 15 miles an hour. Nothing too serious. Just in a different direction, south southeasterly, as opposed to west uh, northwest. It's been almost all the way around. We didn't have a single round yesterday under par. We've had three sixty-nine, four sixty-nines today, as we join Jesper Parnovic, and uh, having made a very good recovery at the eighth hole to get to here. The old putter. Very short face it's got on it, and looks like a bit of a bit of some dis discarded plumbing. It's like a T joint. He's given that a beautiful free run up the slope, but he didn't give it enough. Just a touch of dampness. Now you can see the rain coming on as we show you alphabetically how everyone is performing either on the course or completed. If you look at the right hand figures, the 18 means they've completed. So we go to Tiger Woods. Oh, that's a good two putts from where he was. My goodness me. I'm really pleased with that. Now Amira. And he holds a nice putt there. Mark Mira after a nice three at the eighth. And the par at the ninth now, Furick. This for a four. interesting the plumb bob you're supposed to do it with the putter head hanging either away from you or towards you if you hang it at a broadside on I'm not sure how you get the gravity right but he's such a good putter he obviously knows what he's doing a little wall of death from the right hand side but it's in Brian Watts now on the eighth. Uh, it's not a bad putt from there. But could easily have had a crack at that and gone several feet past. Sensible, sensible putt. Well done. Nice putt there for Justin Rose. A nice par four to ten. Nothing wrong with that. That's very good indeed. He had a chance of a birdie. We go to Panovic. Also on the eighth, of course.
That's certainly not the first time he's hit the hole today. So he drops a shot there and uh, goes back to three over. It's a shame. And then Tiger Woods at this very nice par three. Well, he's shot through the back of a lot of holes. That's the confusion of having spent five days with a westerly wind. So Jesper Parlovic threatens, but now drops back with that bogey at the eighth. And Brian Watts going along very, very nicely indeed. Three straight pars after his last birdie at the fifth hole. And the two-shot lead over Marco Mira and Jim Furyk. And leading by three now over Jesper Parnovic. Tiger Woods at four, Raymond Russell and Justin Rose at five over par. And Gordon Brown Jr. has dropped a couple of shots at the 13th and the 14th. And he's back to seven over par. And the 10th tee is uh, pretty close to the clubhouse here at Royal Birkdale. It's a very private tee. You have to go through a private footpath to get up to this tee. Some of the championship tees are remarkably small, and you can see they've virtually played all four days from this area. The one at the 8th is, is the same. There it is. Like a little postage stamp stuck up there. The members' tee, beautifully immaculate. That Nobody's been on it for a couple of weeks. Well, the air traffic controllers have advised us that we're about to be hit with uh, quite a deluge of rain and fortunately not uh, thunder and lightning, we hope, because thunder, light, rain you can get on with. The Seaside Links golf course would probably stand up to the weather better than any other type. So ninth tee with Brian Watts, championship leader. Well, if he wanted to put it on the fairway, he couldn't put it in a better place. So part of it, just having a look around, checking his yardage book and all the other statistical information he has available to him. 411 yards, this ninth hole. You drive over one of the dunes on the right, which goes, takes you into the left half of this fairway to about uh, where we are now, just short of those bunkers on the right. You turn half right, and it goes down into a dip in front of the green onto a plateau green. And this is Jasper. Looked a very good swing, and the crowd like it. But, well, it's not too bad over there. It seems to be sitting up okay. All the umbrellas out now. All this rain looks as if it's about to come in on us, as Alex was telling us. Now Raymond Russell at the 13th. Just a little bit short with his second, but a lovely chip thriving in the conditions now, although the weather is going to deteriorate, we have been advised. Costantino Rocca there with him. He's seven over par, out in 35, and par's home, Rocca.
So this is the weather scene at the moment. The attendance to the championship has been interesting. Up until to yesterday, we had 156,000 people through the gates, and they were expecting 40 today. They may not quite have achieved that, um, but it's a f certainly going to get near 190,000 for the four days. Very good result. Justin Rowe's second shot to the 11th, 160 yards. Looks good to me. It's a great shot. Unfortunately, screwing back a little bit. He's getting, a he's getting such a warm reception on every tee and every green. It's like Jack Nicklaus, really. It really uh, almost makes you cry. Houston's second shot. He's got 150 to the pin. Just out of the rough. Might get a bit of a flyer. That's a great shot. Excellent shot. Marco Mir at the tenth, second shot. Good one. Well, they're all moving into the final nine where, well, the drama usually happens. Well, Jim Furyk on the 10th, um, 403 yard par four, completely different from yesterday. They're only going to be hitting uh, wedges or nine irons into this hole. He's, uh, ex he's got 128 yards to the pin. He's just seen Marco Mir hit a beautiful shot, so uh, I think he'll have learned something from that. It's right on line, it's just whether it gets a nice bounce. At the ninth, Parnovic, second shot. Drills it in. Up the bat, that's a good result there. That's a wonderful shot. This, uh, this hole being marshaled by members from West Derby. Uh, uh, Peter Eel, uh, Paul Eels, I should say, who plays on the tour, has put in a tremendous amount of work for their juniors, which is, uh, which is nice as we look at Watts, who is going about his business in a wonderful style, a quiet style. He looks very good to me, Beverly. Yes, he's very impressive, Peter, isn't he? And I think we'll see him maybe fly this all the way onto the green, as opposed to the shot we've just seen part of it play. On 52 to the flag. Maybe a seven, six iron, something like that. A little bit of breeze against. Another good, good shot. He, he mm. seems, Peter, to be playing sort of fairly conservatively, doesn't he? Well, that's good. He's two strokes ahead. As long as he keeps getting past, somebody's got to get three birdies and not drop any shots to go by him. I think he's, uh, he's showing us the way, <laughs> the way to play. Well, it may all end up in tears, but at the moment he's pretty good. Tiger Woods on the 13th. Right, the three wood, I suspect. Very good drive, right in the middle. Justin Rose. Get in the oh, yes. See, if he'd left it alone, it might have gone in. Leave the lad alone. For the tenth with Jim Furyk. Played a pretty smart second shot into this green. Which has got a lot of undulations in it. This green, difficult to read. Oh, 
Well, there you see it's not a very long putt. It is uphill. It's a question of how he sees it. Don't think there's a great deal of borrow in it. Might just wander out from the right to, right to left. Well, I thought the same as he thought, and uh, it was pretty much straight. I think he's going to mark it because he could be in the in the way. Find the marker somewhere. That's it. It's strange. I wonder why he marked that. Really, it's a very short putt. He's not in Marco Mira's line in any way at all. So he would have seen that. Although Furyk was from a obviously further to our left, Amira's right. Thought it might have moved a little bit, but he could do with this. If he's going to make a bit for this championship, he needs to hold this. No. I think he may, may have just pulled that a little bit. Tiger Woods. 13th, second shot. Oh, oh. Well, as we come back, we see the pins way over there. Brian Watts at the ninth. That's a good putt from there. He's a foot and a half to tidy up for four. But he's playing the percentage game at the moment. Trying to hit the fairways, trying to hit the greens. Don't, don't make any mistakes. And let the others force the pace. Another good solid par from Brian Watts, championship leader by two. Sandy Lyle at the 17th. For a birdie. Oh. <laughs> Those uh, drop shots in the second and third, three putt and a missed little putt. Four for 72, down the last for Sandy. Mark O'Meara. 11th tee. Going with irons now. See how the wind has changed. Oh, I had a bad bounce there. And he's just in the semi-rough. Amazing how this whole, or this course has changed in the last 24 hours. Uh, Jim Furyk. Also playing iron. They've all parred this hole every day. Amir and Furyk. They like it on the tee. Perfect position down the left half of the fairway. You can come in at the good angle to come in at the flag from. Parnovic at the ninth for a birdie. Yes. Well now. Thirty-four. Par, but two over. Sixteenth, Davis Love. He's five over, two under for the day. Looks no more than an eight iron, this. And yesterday they were hitting twos, threes, one irons. 
Beautiful swinger of the golf club. Lovely address position. Head absolutely still. And a beautiful result. Excellent shot there. Raymond Russell at the 14th found trouble. Gets out of trouble. Very nicely out of trouble. That's all right, isn't it? Look at that. All pars, two birdies. Well done, Raymond. Justin Rose. 12th tee. Lovely shot there from Justin. Gordon Brand. Oh. Well, that's a pity because he was going along very well. Those last three holes, five, four, seven, that's killed him. Parnovic, 10th tee. No more than a four iron, a three iron. Just playing for position. Lovely shot. All these, pl all these players at the end of their round, they're, they're looking at uh, making top 15 to bring the championship next year. Marco Mir at the 11th. Bite. Bite, bite, he cries, and it didn't. But it's okay, and it's trying to get back onto the green, and by golly, it's doing... What happened there? That's amazing. How do they do that? Brian Watts, 10th tee. Still got that lovely rhythm. Well, these are the, the last nine holes of the championship. Very, very important now to keep your composure. Tiger in trouble at the 13th. And he gets out of it. That's a beautiful shot. They really are masters out of the sand now. Round and about the greens. It's Almost silly to call them a hazard. Good shot. Justin Rose. Birdie effort at the 12th. Perfect. Right in the middle of the hole. What a tournament he's having. Absolutely brilliant. Big smile. Smile like a Cheshire cat. All changes tomorrow, son, when you turn pro. Is he definitely turning pro tomorrow? Well, we'll speak about them as we look to Furick now. Whoops, a daisy. And there's nothing wrong with that. He does clip the ball beautifully. We were mentioning Eamon Darcy before had a, well, not being unkind, but rather his swing of his own, sort of loose-limbed youngster. And he got the job done pretty well. Difficult day to keep everything dry as we go to Davis Love. On the 16th. Just gone left. That was for birdie. Annoyed with himself. Yes, with Parnovic's second shot on the 10th. Just 150 yards. Wind helping just a little. I was about to see the top of the pin to this slightly uphill green. And pretty good, and he played that fairly quickly once he got the ball. He has just been informed by Andy McPhee that this group are now on the clock. In other words, they are out of position on the course and will now have to try and catch up a little bit. Watts, just a little further on, six yards further on, 143 yards to the flag. Cannot see the 
see the flag, a few uh, humps and hollers to come over. Again, just a short iron and a good angle to get at this pin. Bunker guarding the right-hand side of the green and just a few swales along the left-hand side. And still that rhythm is there. We're all saying it. I hope you're taking note at home. Oh, that's pretty neat, isn't it? This is the sixth time Watts has played in this championship. He's missed uh, qualifying for the final 36 on a couple of occasions. But he's certainly keeping his composure and his game together in uh, fine style at the moment. Jim Furick on the 11th using the plumb bob method of lining his, trying to get the line of his putt. I've never understood that. This is for Birdie. Good effort. Tiger Woods. 14th. Looks slightly anxious. And that's why I missed the target by a, by a distance. Marco Mira. After just coming off the back of the green. With his second shot, roll back nicely for him. This is putt, putt for a birdie. Should come from right to left. Go in. Go in. Has he got it? Yeah. Oh. He goes to one over. It's all happening now. You can feel the crowd beginning to buzz. Nine holes to go, the championship. Justin Rose, 13th. It's definite, is it, that he's turning pro tomorrow, Roger? Well, if you uh, believe the papers. Ah. But I think he is. Um, he's talking about uh, signing up with Carnegie Sports Group, sports management. There's Jim Furick. That's four footer for par. See, no practice swing again. I always like to have a practice swing just to get the feel of the putt. He obviously doesn't need to. That's a few that have gone in the side door, but they've hit the bottom. Raymond Russell at the 15th. Leaking away to the right a little bit. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. But if he's got a reasonable lie, it's not too bad. It's par five. And Brian Watts for birdie on the 10th. Now his caddy should move away, yes. Just let that leak right. Uh, just keep your composure. Good chance there. Still par for the day, par for the championship. Well, I hope we get better weather than this in the middle of August when we're up at Royal Lytham St. Anne's for the Weetabix Ladies Open Championship being played on that delightful course. About the middle of August, we'll be there. The cameras will be there and some of the greatest women golfers in the world.
Now Tiger Woods, difficult second shot. Breaks the hands very quickly. Now that's a lovely, lovely touch from Tiger. So he's got a four footer for his par. And Marco Mira, who for one brief spell in the middle of the front nine, got into a share of the lead with Brian Watts, but then dropped shots at the sixth and seventh, is now back to within one after that birdie at the 11th. O'Meara, who tied for third here at the Royal Birkdale Open in 1991 and won at Royal Birkdale, of course, in the Lawrence Batley on the European Tour in 1987. Within one shot of Brian Watts' lead, Jim Furyk, Jesper Parnovic at two over par and Raymond Russell with Tiger Woods and now Justin Rose at four over par. Four shots off the lead. Parnovic. Tee shot at the 11th. <laughs> Chart. O'Meara, 12th tee. One of the all time greats, this par three. Good shot. Perfectly pin high. Brian Watts at the 11th. Swept off the top of the tee again. The club's travelling low and right into the back of the ball and another fire a shot finds the fairway. Raymond Russell, third shot on 15. That looks pretty good. That's a lovely shot from there, Raymond. Obviously had a nice lie in the rough there. Had a lot of room to work with, though. Beautiful shot. Jim Furyk here on the 12th, 183 yard par three. He's just seen Mark O'Meara here, good shot into the middle of the green. This wind seems to have died, which is gonna help the players on this hole. And uh, he seems to have played a very good shot straight at it. It'll be very interesting to see if it stops. No, that as looks Gary perfect. Wilson I was saying the wind has died and I think the players should thank their lucky stars for that because if it had been blowing half as hard as it was yesterday the course would have been even more difficult because the, yesterday's uh, wind and the day before's was a, more or less the prevailing wind when it suddenly changes everything becomes very different and difficult what a wonderful stretch of golfing country Justin Rose, second shot at 13. Turn over. Asking it to turn over as he leaked it right. Short and right. Now that is an awkward little pitch over the bunker. Hasn't got a lot of room to work with. Tiger Woods. He rams those in. Saves his par. Davis Love, second shot, 17th hole. Asking the ball to come back. Just come up a little bit short. Just another hop and the one to the left that would have been. Ah, uh, oh, never mind where it would have been, it wasn't. Let me see that. Hold that. Watts. Good drive from uh, Brian Watts off this 11th tee, just 155 to the flag. And he would have been, uh, would have seen what happened to Parlevik's ball, just gone in that little gully to the right. And the safe position for Watts to play for is just left of the flag. We're just an eight iron. 
As Gary said earlier, very little breeze here now. What there is is coming from the left. And good shot. Not quite as close as he maybe would have liked it, but again, quite safe from Watts. Well, I hope the weather doesn't deteriorate too much over the next uh, couple of hours or so. Brian Watts still leads the way and par. He's safely on the 11th green and uh, well, he's one ahead of the pack, but much can happen. This is Raymond Russell. Uh, very good. So he goes to three under for the day, three over for the championship. A uh, little run going there. <laughs> oh, I was having a little thought there. Tiger, I think he gave that. Oh, no, he wishes he hadn't. There's nobody there to find it either. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Look at that. It's way over there. Back to thir 13. Justin Rose. Little pitch over the bunker. Oh, he's played that very well. Beautiful shot. See, so we have all the shots, this guy. Marco Mira, long putt for a birdie. He's on a roll, is he? Well, he did it at the Masters of Augusta. We saw Justin Leonard do it last year at Royal Troon. Over the last few holes, suddenly rolling putts in. Up ahead at 17, Davis Lubb. This is his third shot. Pins 25 yards on, on the top of the bridge there. Now he should be playing a little pitch and run, just pitching on the bottom of the bottom slope and then running out onto the top. Just a hands and arms movement. Oh, he just pitched it a bit too far. Twenty-five feet past the hole. Jim Furyk. After that good tee shot. Looks good. No, oh, he was on the move there. He was dead eye dick. Justin Rose holding out for par. Super up and down there. It's a tricky little putt downhill left to right. Watts. Now tied with O'Meara. Or oh, O'Meara is tied with him. Beautifully judged again. Mir and Watts are at par. Furyk one over. O'Meara, 13th tee. Go with driver. Looks a lovely swing under pressure, doesn't it, Peter? It does, and uh, if he should win this championship, he will look back on the happenings at the sixth hole where uh, much uh, could have happened, but he got away with a five when it might have been a lot more when uh, yesterday when thought he'd lost his ball but that's all now history but by such margins and things and happenings championships are won and lost Furyk just one behind
Yeah. And there they are, side by very friendly. <coughs> Barnovic, 11th hole. Little chip shot, taking the flag out, very confident. Super little touch there. That'll just going to tap in for four. Yep, good four. Par for the day, two for the championship. Couples in with 81, Mark Brooks and 80. High scores still around and about. But joint leaders, O'Meara and Watts. And you see anyone on that board, you only need to have a, a special shot at one of the par fives. I've, Tiger has been extraordinarily lucky here. He hit a massive drive way off line. And look at the life. I bet if you did that, you wouldn't find a line like that, would you? Never see the ball again. He's going to give this the business as well. If that finds the target, I tell you what, that might be, that could well be a very influential stroke in this championship. Massive shot. He's four behind. He could well chip in. Raymond Russell, 16th hole. Another good shot. Parnovic. <coughs> Got two short holes and two fives to play in his remaining holes. has that little routine just pointing the club nice hands good grip oh. uh oh they were groaning before it so he shoved it away oh that could be it could be bad news there. Shoved it away. Now I'm not sure what's behind there, but I'm, I know it's not too friendly. Amir on the 13th. It's 498 yards, uh, but still only a par four. He's hit a super drive. Uh, he's only got 200 yards to the front edge, and the pin's only uh, uh, seven on. So uh, he's actually got a good opportunity to get the ball quite close. Looks as though he's pulled it slightly, and it's possibly slightly short as well. So that's not so good for him. He'd be disappointed with that. Justin, Justin Rose, 14th tee. And there's no great applause as that flies down, and that's why he's missed it, but he's clear of the thick stuff. And that's not the easiest of shots left. Well, Jim Furyk um, is playing with Marco Mira, just managed to get past him with the drive. These two are a bit like a pair of gunslingers uh, uh, shooting it out. Um, only a shot between them, and Furyk has the chance to press his advantage. If he can knock this on the green, uh, somewhere near the flag, he'll have a very good birdie chance and uh, maybe uh, pass Amira. 
probably only going to be hitting something in the region of a uh, three iron. Looks very good. It's just whether it's up or not. Well, you lucky little rascal. That might have been in a horrid spot, but it isn't. Well, Brian Watch, that's almost the first bad shot he's hit today and has found a filthy line on the right of the 12th. He's got a, a lovely little strawberry plant sort of trailing behind the ball. He won't think that's very lovely. And the mound ahead of him is about 10, 12 feet high. And in fact, he's got to hit it quite hard to get it over that mound. He'll have to throw it all the way onto the green. If it's short, it will get stuck on the mound the other side and then we'll have a very difficult third shot. So be down the grip on the sand dime and grip it really tight and hit it hard. Justin Rose at the left of 14. Little chip and run over and down the hill. It's a lovely touch. He really is enjoying himself now. Raymond Russell. Now it'll be fun and games if this goes in. Oh, Raymond, Raymond. I want you to pop that in, get an eagle at the 17th and well, I'll give you a four at the last. That'll put the cat on. Oh, no, I mustn't say that. Bird lovers write in if you use these old sayings. Would upset the apple cart. So second shot from Watts behind the bank on the right of the 12th. Lying badly. And that could be good. Oh, just catches the down slope of the mound the other side. And really, that's pretty good. If he could have stood there all day and really perhaps not come out with a better shot than that. So about 12 feet left for his par here on the 12th. Well, that was a very good result. He perhaps might feel he's a little bit unlucky. Well, he didn't see it, but it might have pitched and gone even nearer. Mark Amir on the 13th, having gone into the bunker, has got to make an up and down to save par. Uh, he's actually not got too bad a lie, so hopefully he should be uh, able to get uh, the ball fairly close. Now that's a poor shot from Amir. I think he'll be disappointed with that. So both our leaders in trouble. Woods at 15. That was for Eagle. Certain birdie. Back to Furyk at the 13th. Uh, there could be a sort of sandy base to this shot where over the years sand's been played out of the bunker, up on top of the hill. Looks to be nice and tight, but you never know if you just catch it a whisker heavy it just sort of poofs into the sand and you, you get a miss hit. You can see he's got his one, if not his most lofted club. Ah, he's all right there. Grass, grass is nice and firm. Nipped it. Look at that, another delightful shot. <laughs> if you're, if you remember at Valderrama against Nick Felder hold them out of bunkers, chipped in. He did all sorts of things over the last six or seven holes. Didn't matter, though. Russell for par at 16. Well done. Good par, that. Very steady today. No bogeys. Amira for a par at the 13th. Furyk uh, is only 12 or 14 inches away, so he's pretty well assured of his par. Parnovic at 12. Putting from the back of the green. Oh, wow. 
that short. Amira now. Oh, I'm not sure whether he thought that was in or not. He was on the move. Just fell out of the hole. Just slightly pulled second shot there. Tossed him a shot. A one over par. Brian Watts for par. And he drops a shot. So he goes back to one over. Well, this is the time now, isn't it, for composure and for class. Mark O'Meara, after a couple of birdies, dropping a shot at the 13th, and Brian Watts also dropping that shot at the 12th. Back into a three-way tie for the lead now with Jim Furyk at one over par. Seven players within four shots. And we've got uh, Jesper Parnovic, two over par. Raymond Russell at three over par with the par five seventeenth next. Tiger Woods after that birdie at the 15th, three over par. Justin Rose going along very nicely indeed on this back nine at four over par. It's anyone's, isn't it? It certainly is, and I wouldn't like to pick a winner out of that lot because so much can happen over these closing holes. We've got the par five, we've got a par three, got a difficult 18th and three players as Steve was saying now at one over par into the old nannies nothing like a nana sandwich now this is a very different hole today with the wind coming well was a 90 degree change you can see the trees behind. They're moving a little bit, but really, in all truth, it's died away. There's a little bit of haze, a dampness, a sort of sea fret, a mist, a ha, hanging about. Parnovic at 13. With driver. Just gone into... Yes, for Parnovic down the left-hand side of the 13th and in a spot of trouble in the long rough. Seventeenth, Raymond Russell. And that's beauty. 547 yards. Didn't really skip on quite as much as we've seen some. Jim Furyk, 14th tee. Lovely up and down at the last for par. It's almost come to a match play situation now. It's If I get mine on the green, it puts pressure on you getting yours on the green. Does he push that to the right? Yes. Ooh. That's got in a little pot bunker on the right-hand side of the green. He'd do well to get his par from there. Brian Watts now at the 13th. Tees the ball very high and then sweeps it away. Seabirds are coming in for their tea. You know, I saw a movie, that bird film last night frightened me to death. Well, Mark O'Meara has just seen uh, Jim Furyk miss it right. be interesting to see if this influences his own tee shot. He's only got 198 yards to pin. It looks as though it's straight on line. It looks very good, in fact. The 
It's a fantastic shot from Marco Mira. It's only about four feet left of the hole. Well, a beautiful shot. Chasing the double. Raymond Russell, second shot. I think he's gone with driver. Trying to chase it up there. Come left, come left. Well done, good shot there. Now if he could finish 4-3, very interesting. Tiger Woods, 16th. Spin, no. Tiger's just two shots behind. Raymond, uh, Raymond Russell, Tiger Woods are, th are uh, two shots behind. Jesper's in trouble though here at the 13th. Well, Jesper Parnovic couldn't have found a worse line down the left-hand side of the 13th. It really is very thick rough there. In fact, it was very difficult to see the ball. He has a bunker ahead of him, about uh, 100 yards ahead of him, and he's really just going to chop this out, I think, with a sand iron and try and keep it on the fairway and get on in three. This hole playing much longer today, obviously. 4.98, I mean, it's almost a par five, really. Well, he's got it out, and uh, it's not every player who could have got that ball out. Uh, I think the club golfer might have had to declare that unplayable. Furyk at the 14th. Uh, I had a misjudgment from the tee. Elmira. Just uh, three or four feet from the hole with his tee shot. Oh, wonderful. Aren't they? Aren't they a joy to watch. Now back at the 13th, Brian Watts from the center of the fairway. You can see the flag. 217 to go. Keeping the rhythm. Be good, baby. Be good. It must be right at it. And it is. The pin teasingly on the front of the green. That's a good shot. Leaves an uphill putt. Justin Rose, the 15th. He hit two beautiful shots up in front of the screen last night or yesterday. And that's going to come by the edge. And that's a beautiful shot. He's found the green. Tiger Woods uh, knocked it onto the, or just off the green from heavy, well, not from heavy rough, but uh, so they're about equidistance, uh, driving strength. Justin uh, Rose is just uh, 238 yards to the front. He's uh, obviously pretty pumped up, and he's. Uh, I thought he would hit a driver down the left, fade it onto the green, but he's uh, hit a three wooden, knocked it 15 feet on the front. And uh, if he turns pro tomorrow, I think I'll be right on him for the caddying job. <laughs> it could be a good bag to have. Furick, after that wonderful bunker shot, gets a par. This is Parnovic's ball. This is his third shot. And having recovered from the rough, he hasn't quite made the green even uh, with his third shot here at the 13th. 
Well, great excitement here. He's tiptoeing forward. Raymond Russell had this putt for an eagle, which would put him to one over should it go in. If he's down in two, it won't be too bad. Go on up there. Oh, I don't want to. Well, if he gets that. He's having a very good championship, is, uh, is Raymond. He's had a miserable season. He's only qualified for the 72 holes twice in th the tournaments he's played. Mark Amira. Yeah. And another putt, Camley tapped in. Another two for Amira. My goodness, he's had some birdies. This nine. Four, three, two, five, two. Tiger at the 16th. Third shot, long putt. Left it short. Well, Tiger Woods knows he's got to produce something over these closing holes, but Mark O'Meara is producing exactly what's required. Three birdies in the last four holes, and Brian Watts has only been out of the lead for a brief spell uh, since the second round. That was yesterday afternoon when Justin Rose overtook him for just about one hole, but he's in a share of second now behind this man, Mark O'Meara, on the 15th tee. On the par five. Oh, and he's unleashed that one. He usually doesn't change his rhythm very much. He usually keeps going at the same rate. And that is absolutely right up the heart of the fairway. That's a beautiful tee shot at the par five. And he can get up in two now. Peter Hedges, the rules official. And a Walker Cup player in his own right, and uh, 64 rules officials at this great championship from nine different countries. Amazing. Now then, Jim Furyk, if there's a playoff, it'll be 15, 16, 17, 18, four holes, and then up and down the 18th. There's a tie then. Oh, that is not the thing to do at the par five. That possibly removes the chances of getting close to the green. On the 15th, this long putt. See where he's aiming off, miles away to the right. Over the top it comes, turning down. How's the speed? Looking good. Looking good. Excellent putt from Master Rose. 18 tomorrow. Was it next week or whatever it is, end of the month? You'll be old enough to do anything you want. To the 17th, Raymond Russell. This putt for a birdie. And he's playing beautifully today. Totally against his run of form. He hasn't dropped a shot. He's four under for this round. This is one of the great rounds on this final day. Panovic. 13th. He's had three. Oh, I thought he'd done it. So did he. So did he. A little birdie pot here at the 15. And Justin Rose is back to level par, and all to his credit. So there it is, Mark O'Meara is the leader on his own, and then at second place shared by Jim Furyk and Brian Watts, but Jim Furyk in trouble off the tee at 15. Raymond Russell from Preston Pans in Scotland moving up the leaderboard. Four under for this round, that is incredible. Four for 66. Watts on the 13th coming up. No, he's not given it enough. Safe four. Mm. 
Five holes left. Now then up onto the elevated 18th tee. Now don't go down the right. There's a bunker down the right. He's gone the other way. He's gone away from it. Oh, and that's awful. That is so thick and wet now. Jesper, five though. That was a drop stroke at the 13th porty shot. And is he seeing his chances slipping away yet again? You never know though. You never, never, never know. There's the big old tent of it stands filling up. Remarkable week, all the things that go on here when you think about it. I was just looking at uh, uh, our fine caterers at Kendrick's. They don't know what they've cooked this week. This is for the, uh, for the television people here. 200 gallons of soup, 1,000 gallons of tea and coffee, a small lake of orange cordial, about a ton and a half of spuds, as we look at Justin. And they like it, do they? Maybe right a bit. Oh, come away. Mustn't be partisan. It's nice now, Alex. Yes, I just went past the Arnold Palmer bush there on the right, and uh, they've preserved that. They've taken a few bits of shrubbery away. Some 20 acres of white poplar have gone from this great lynx, but that bush has stayed as we go back into the trouble at the 15th with Jim Furyk. And you can see now, it's just what happened to Parnovic. He was reduced to a sand iron when he missed the fairway. And now we've got Jim Furyk reduced to a sand iron, and I'm afraid up ahead, uh, the Scot might have the same sort of trouble, Raymond Russell at 18. There, yeah, ooh, a real hard clump. You see the heavy rain has turned this wispy grass into something quite soggy, and he's done as well as he could, but you can see he's still got a monster of a shot for his third. Jim Furyk, we kind of fancied Jim Furyk to be close and he certainly is close he's only one shot off the lead at the moment now then Amira Mark Amira championship leader going for the uh, the double with the United States Masters and he can go at it straight at the green with this started at right Well, Marco Mira had a go for the green. He's just finished uh, short of the bunker on the right of the green. He's got a fairly straightforward shot to, uh, to the pin from where he is, so hopefully uh, this will be a birdie chance for him. Well, I knew it had gone a bit right, but I thought it had actually gone worse than that, and so he's not too bad. You can see the pin is sort of up into the heart of the green and plenty of room to play any sort of shot that he fancies, really. But he was hoping to get home. Brian Watts. The last of the par threes. He's had a par here every day. Could do with a birdie now. And if it, oh, died. Pitched and died. Right on line. Must have looked exquisite from the tee. Uh, Parnovic. Shot they murmur. Yes, not bad. It's not over by a long chalk. Now Raymond Russell in the very thickest of the rough at the 18th. The pin at 18 is 27 yards up the green, six from the left. Well, he's got to carry the uh, the bunker there. And it really has, I think, had the sensible plan there to play out to the right. And that's fine there. There's nothing else he could do. Now, he hasn't had a blemish on the card. Four birdies and the rest bars. Tiger at the 17th third shot. 
Wild drive up the bank, got it to here. He's pulled that one too, I fancy. He's done that several times today. He gives him such a whack at the flag. He's been uh, sort of 10, 15, 18 yards, but no, nothing to do with that, son. And back to the par 5, 15. Jim Furyk, this is his third shot, and it looks very much like a seven iron. 26 yards of green before he reaches the pin. No, it's, it's shorter than a six. It's more like a nine. Now that, I was going to say would react backwards. There's a sort of little drop off at the back. Some of these greens have been rebuilt, reshaped. Rose, 16th, second. Bite. Well, there again, rather like Tiger Woods. A little too much punch in that one. Third shot of Raymond Russell. How nice if he'd get down in two. Caddy likes it. Well, he probably learned his golf on the old the Royal Musselborough links there, and they'll all be watching that in the clubhouse. That's where all the lads from Preston Pan started their days, caddying. 225th birthday coming up for that club. There you are, Preston Pans, a little mining and fishing town just east of Edinburgh. Tiger Woods at the 17th. He's had three fours, three birdies at this hole. This is his fourth shot, though. Needs to chip this in if he's going to keep the sequence going. Would you believe it? I think he liked that. <laughs> Rather partisan, I feel. That's why electrifying. He may be running out of holes. Would you believe? Brian Watts at the 14th, a bit aggressive. Well, there's so much happening and everybody's so closely bunched together. O'Meara, 15th, third. He's had three fives at this hole so far. And we have that today for a birdie. We're at the 14th now, Parnovic. And again, just, just the strength, keeping it above the hole. A good read, now it's too hard. Rose at the 16th left this first putt way short and he's let it no he hasn't I thought he'd let it go to the right that's very good now the lads getting ready come on Rosie Rosie my Rosie wonder where he is today The nice uh, little putt there for a par for Brian Watts, and he that <laughs> drop shot at the 12 just took him out of the lead. He's just one behind. 
Furyk. At the 15th, he's not hit that anywhere near enough. So they begin to fade when they get in sight of the winning post. To the 14th, and Parnovic gets his par. Three over, but three behind, and maybe another chance is gone. Almira at 15. A putt for a birdie. And let's give him a two shot lead. Oh, he set off after it. I think he was certain it was in. And that could prove a very costly miss. A par five. But others have been birdieing it on a regular basis. And he knew he could reach that green in two. But what a run of. Uh, Figures on the way home. He's had one, two, three, twos he's had. Unbelievable stuff. Now then, Jim Furick. Jim Furick, who's uh, just one behind. Yeah, that just lets you see how close they all are. Raymond Russell up at the 17th. At the 18th, I beg your pardon, with a putt to stay at two. quickly to the 18th green and Russell does it gets a four a 66 and reminiscent uh, you remember a couple of years ago Stephen Bottomley at St Andrews having had no season at all almost won the championship and Raymond Russell has set a very good target should anybody stumble over these final hours well done Raymond Sixty six. Excellent play. And Tiger Woods. I thought he might have unleashed a driver or something here at eighteen. And he's still capable of about two hundred and sixty yards with an iron and he's threaded it up the center. Perfect shot. Furyk. It's for a par five at the 15th. Done it. No, we had. Oh, well, both of them horseshoe round. Well. It was a six. Ryan Watts. Uh, to par five, and if he gets a good one here, he's uh, capable of the distance to pick up a birdie. And don't go in there. You don't get birdies from in there. Well, maybe you do, of course, if you chip and putt. No, Jesper. And Jesper's cutting loose now. If he's going to lose it, he's going to lose it in style. And that's a mighty hit. That's a real... Cracking drive. Well, it's very, very close indeed. Elmira is at level par. And if he finishes par in, that would be a total of 280. But there are a couple of dangerous holes. We've seen the rough, the left and right of the 18th, the 17th, the rough down the left. Some good driving holes. This is the par 5 15th. These bunkers on the left, depending on the wind, those can come into play. A lot of trouble up on the right. Watts has gone in the rough on the right. Parnovic's hit a big drive, and uh, I guess he can reach the green in two. Could be a big turning point here. Mark O'Meara preparing for the tee shot at the 16th, 416 yarder. And he's not taking his uh, wooden club. He's probably allowing himself a bit of room on the left side by choosing this club. But he might have had to go at this one. He's a straight hitter.
as you can see it's bearing left it's got a bit to drop yet there it is that's a nice shot lovely shot it's absolute center of the fairway rose 17th tee shot and that's better than his tee shot yesterday that's bounding on now rose three over he could do with a bit of bit of magic over the, the last two it's possible and jim furick who must be feeling a bit low a six at the last hole a bogey at the wrong time he's now two off the lead He's going with his metal. And he's gone for the narrow route. And a little bit of sliding fade on it to take it round the corner. And that's a good shot. Pin at the front right of the green. 16th pin is just eight yards on, but five from the right. And so Amira fancying a shot in from the left. Tigers, second shot. Well, he hit that Turn. so hard. Turn it, Wynn. Perfect distance. Just was looking for the wind to turn it a little bit. Brian Watts, you can see what's happened here at the par five. There's no way that he can do anything other than play it out. Mustn't get into any bunkers up ahead. This is an open-faced wedge. Gone a bit left, turned it over a wee bit. I think that's fine. And that's all he has to do. That's all he could do. 15th, there's the flag right up the green, 26 yards up. Fine drive, yes, but Palovic second shot at 15, 234 to the front, trying to hit a little slider, and unfortunately hit a big slider. That's gone right up into the crowd, needs a little bit of luck from there. Well, Beverly, it's running down the uh, spectator walkway at the moment, and it, whilst it'll lie tight, he, he knows he had to get something like an eagle at this hole at the par five. Marco Mir on the 16th has uh, hit a nice drive, nice and safe. Um, he's got 165 yards to the front edge, so he's left himself quite a long way back. Uh, he's only hit the, uh, the ball 230 yards off the tee uh, using an iron. I suppose that's acceptable, and he's certainly uh, found the mark with the fairway. The breeze is um, it's sort of going up and down, and I think he's having to try and make a mind up, uh, his mind up as to where he's got to aim on the green. Looks as though he's pulled it. Well, that was, uh, well, as, as Gary was saying, uh, a longer shot, 165 yards. Justin Rose, second shot. He's got 232 to the front. Um, he's pulled that left, unfortunately. That was a shame. It was a Tough shot, he had to get it on the green. Had to hit it down the right and draw it a bit. He's left himself a tough chip now, unfortunately. 
And there's a Rye Luke at the neck of his club. He hit it out of the heel end of the club there. But it'll be interesting if they had a clapometer machine to see who Tiger Woods or Justin Rose will, will get the biggest numbers at the 18th. Third shot for Brian Watts on the 15th. It's quite interesting. I'm standing up by the green. I can feel quite a breeze here. Where he is, he's sheltered by a, a nice stand of pine trees down the left. So he'll have to take that in consideration. 148 to the flag, but uh, needs to start this just a little left of the pin. Or just a, an eight iron. And that has drifted to the right, just off the back edge, but uh, no problems. Outside birdie chance. Tiger at the 18th. Well, he chipped in at the last for a birdie four, having driven wildly into the rough. He has this for a three. This would take him to one over. A total of 281. If he two putts, it's 282. And uh, he'll be tied with Raymond Russell. This putt for a 66. Would you believe it? <laughs> Well, wow. oh, lummy Charlie. That's why he earns the big bucks, folks. Sixty six. He seems to have missed umpteen shots. But you had a few chippings. There's old sad eyed fluff there. Look at it. <laughs> Bit of minestrone in the tash, but all is well. Uh, Jim Furyk. Second shot after the 16th. And that's a nice shot. Yes, and a nice bit of backspin on it too. Going towards the hole. Now, Furyk was recorded. This is Mark O'Meara whistling by. Uh, he still smiles, still looks r quite relaxed. He's been a great assistance and help, of course, to Tiger Woods. Took him off to Ireland last week. They had a few rounds on seaside links to toughen them up, get used to the turf, get used to the winds. Maybe just as well they did. No, Amira's had three shots here. And he's one shot lead. No, Tiger there at one over. Brian Watts at one over. And Justin Rose here at three over, Peter. Third shot. Well. Tiger was off the green on the right and chipped in for a four. Well, there's so many permutations that uh, could be a playoff. Tiger might nick it if they all fall by the wayside. No, Jim Furyk's not out of it. He's uh, two over. Roll this one in, Big Jim. We'll all be nervous, Rex, if you do. Oh, when he's edged the hole again. Oh. Two in a row. Left edge at one, right edge at the other. Uh, 
It's hard to bear. He's a nice fella. It's tough to take. That's six and then a four. Watts. At the 15th. Hello. Oh, just moved at the death. That's a par five. Watts and Woods at one over. And O'Meara here at the 16th with a putt to stay one ahead of them. Yes, an uncharacteristic uh, second shot he played to miss the green, having hit the perfect tee shot. If he misses this, we got Woods and Watts. And Amira, and it does. It went the opposite way to, to Furyk. He's dropped a shot. And we now have three players at one over. Well, he's still smiling. Maybe he's agreed to share the prize with Tiger. Woods, Amira, and Watts, all at one over par. And a Furyk, who could quite easily have been up there with them. Well, yes, the plot thickens, as somebody once said. Justin Rose at the 17th. Fine putt. It'll be a par five for Justin. Uh, he's level par. Parnovic back at the 15th. That's his par. A nice 34 out, and just that uh, 13th hole, the bogey there sort of stopped him in his tracks. Justin Rose finishes off, and he requires a four for a 70. That's I said if he did any better than a 75 or even 77, he would have had a very good day out. And for this young man to be walking up the hill to the 18th tee, requiring a four for a 70, is really some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Houston there, seven over, tends to have been forgotten. Uh, back to the tee. How close he stands to the ball, Furyk. Causes this huge loop in the backswing. You've got to thread your way through between two giant sand dunes. And he's done that. That's perfect. The other young amateur, the Spaniard, Garcia, he had a 72 today to finish 10 over as we look at 17. There are the mounds, the sand dunes. The other tee originally used to be further to the right, and you sort of had to play. You could play over the first one on the right. Then it turns slightly and rises up to a green. It's well protected. Now, Omira, joint leader. He's taken the driver here. Uh, he took an iron at the, la the last one, and that's in trouble. That is in trouble. He can't reach the green from that. With all the birdies he was enjoying on the way home, he looked pretty certain to uh, to win this championship. And although he still can, he doesn't look quite so comfortable. He's played this hole very well. He's had two birdies and an eagle at the 17th. But uh, today, when he needs one, he's in trouble. Final drive, Justin. Oh, Justin. Well, that cleared everything. Miss Mr. Plod. Uh, he may be lucky. He gets to drop four clubs lengths away from those railings if he keeps it on the left-hand side. Took five here last night. And I think his ball is so just where all the marshals are standing. There's one of them standing there. It might not be. Too bad. Brian Watts. Still maintains that lovely smooth rhythm. 
Up past Palmer's Bush at 16. Now Parnovic. Slight dog leg to the right. Now that ball's beginning to fade. Move to the right. And he's okay. In fact, two beautiful tee shots there at the 16th. You can see the pin at the front portion of the green. Essential you're coming at that pin from a fairway. Nice to see the assortment of teeing grounds all over these holes, and uh, some for the members, some for the guests, and others for the elite. That's the 17th green that we just passed by on the right. All 18 greens, of course, were dug up after the last that championship here. And the leaderboards around the course and word of mouth and the sound of the roars from around the 18th green would have left Marco Mira in absolutely no doubt of what's required. But if it is a playoff, well, it could be a playoff between two of the closest friends on the American tour. Tiger Woods and Marco Mira play so many friendly rounds together and it will be a friendly playoff, that's for sure, but the prize will be just about the biggest in the sport. Tiger Woods and Marco Mira are one over par, but Tiger Woods is in with his round of 66, with that spectacular finish, chipping in at 17 and that monstrous putt at 18. Marco Mira, um, off the tee at 17, has put himself in a very nasty place. All he'll be able to do is uh, knock this out with a sand wedge onto the fairway. You'll have to hit this quite hard and be careful that he doesn't get it snagged. It's finished okay. He's down the fairway and in a nice position to hopefully uh, play a pro shot to the pin. Well, the disadvantage that he's created there is the not being far enough to the right with that shot. The, the, the slope of the green and the pin on the left-hand side makes the third shot quite tight. Just in here on 18, knocks it left of the metal fencing now. The ruling is if you're within two club lengths on the whole side or it interferes with your swing, you can take a drop. The unfortunate thing is on the other side, not the whole side, if it's the other side of the metal fencing, it's got to be within four club lengths. Back to the 17th to Jim Furick, second shot. And that catches the pot bunker at the front right, front left of the green rather. And that was his, I think, his last chance. He had to get it on there, make an eagle, and he knows. He knows in his heart that he's just cooked it. Yes, for Parnovic's second shot at the 16th, this elevated green. Let's get the clubbing right here because uh, if it's too short the shot in the green, it could spin back off the front. Wind a little from the left, just 106 yards to the flag. It'll be a very firm sand down or a little wedge. Wind from the left. Now, I don't know if he caught that fat or not. No, he didn't, but maybe he turned it over. I don't. Oh, that's a little action on it. Bit of a downhill putt, but I, I get the feeling that wasn't the best strike in the world from Jesper. He doesn't look thrilled either. I think it's a shame with Justin here. I think he's just within the four club lengths, which means he's got 215 yards to the front, and he's got that fencing in the way, so he can't uh, start it off low enough. Brian Watts, second shot on 16, just a couple of yards ahead of Parnovic. That routine he always goes through, aiming the, pit, the club almost at the flag, almost at his target. Again, just a short iron. Left is safe, right those deep bunkers. Of course, at this stage, he's got to go for the flag, really. Try and get a birdie or two. 
Could be one coming up here. Now just sit down. That's okay. Nice uphill putt left. Okay, but unlucky that spun back four or five feet. It would have been stone dead if it had just staggered forward. Well, Mark Amir, after that uh, recovery from the left-hand rough on 17, has left himself 130 yards exactly to the pin. Fairly comfortable shot, and uh, with the uh, dampness of the greens, he should be able to get it to sit down. It would be interesting to see what he does. Be the right distance. And Amira able to bring that ball to a pretty sudden standstill there. And it leaves him a putt for a birdie. Very difficult to anticipate exactly which way this is all going to turn. It, and you feel it could turn at any minute. I don't think Tiger's in a bad position. Like to have been one less. Long time since we've had a, a championship. Uh, par, roundabout par has been the winning score. Justin Rose. Well, that was the best he could do. Well, this hole cost him five last night. Looks as if he's going to do the same today. Back to the 17th. I was going to say don't discount Jim Furyk because a birdie here uh, put him right back in the hunt, but I didn't realize the kind of lie he now has. He's going to try and spin it off the bank beyond the next bunker. He could quite easily end up in the next sand trap. Here it comes off the bank. That was one wonderful golf shot. That was a marvelous golf shot. All credit to him. He couldn't stand properly to it. He took the bank into consideration. And he might still birdie that hole. Uh, Ruffy birdies it. And Amira misses. They're all tied again. He's birdied it twice, but Amira's record is about the best. Two birds and an eagle at this hole. Brian Watts at the 16th. His ball at one time was within, oh, probably 30 inches of the hole, then spun back. This to lead the championship. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck. Oh, Watts is putting out. He's got this to remain at one over. A very costly bit of spin on that ball. <clears throat> 
safely in. Remains tied for the lead. One over. The 18th. Justin, Justin Rose, third shot. Get in, they cry. And they were right. <laughs> 69. <laughs> That's Father. Father Rose. What about this? And then the, the moments like this that make it all worthwhile. There's Dad. Well, what about that? Touched with greatness. What a way to finish. Well, this really has been an electrifying week. To the 17th for a birdie four, Furyk. Oh, and not another. He's had putts of that length in the last three holes. Touched. Touched the side of the hole with all of them, but none would drop. Par five. And the roars from the 18th would have told him something fantastic has happened. And this was some drama. Now, Marco Mira, he had a putt here at this 17th for a birdie. And this to take the lead. And in it goes. And after a poor drive, a very good third shot and a great putt. Two under today, level par, and the leader by one stroke. Well, that's a decent few minutes golf, isn't it? My goodness me. Justin Rose chipping in at the 18th for a round of, what, 69, which has electrified the galleries around the 18th and then moments later Marco Mira holding that birdie putt at the 17th which puts him back in front of the field once again a four down the 18th for the Open Championship title just possibly online beautiful drive Everything went strangely quiet. Brian Watts. Tee shot at the 17. And he is only one behind Amira. And there is a cracking shot. Ooh, well, no, he can knock it up in two. Jim Furyk, two behind, two behind. There's something rattling there, and he's got the well, early smiles. He's a good sportsman, a good sport. He's had some chances, Alex, hasn't he? Well, his last three holes, and he's one of the great putters, and, and he's had three seven-footers in a row, and there's how it's gone. Six, four, five, could easily have been five, three, four, and he'd have virtually been in the lead, or certainly sharing it. It looks like a metal three, slight dog leg to the right, but a big bunker on the right. There's the bunker I mentioned, and he's just drifting it away from that. Should stop in a bit of semi. That's okay there. That is okay. Pin is six yards from the left-hand side. There you can see it there in the distance and 27 yards up the green. Panovic. Oh, nice. Nice bounce. Oh, both he and Watts in good position down the 17th.
Sergio Garcia, who's still here, the uh, amateur champion, who's been pipped at the post today in grand style. 72, though. Justin uh, Rose's father there talking, anxious officials looking, peering out of the window. It's all of a buzz. And why not when the final pair come down the last hole? There's the boss, there's Hugh Campbell. Remember at Creef now, now there's a nice little place to visit up just above Octorada. There's a fellow there that'll buy you a pint out of turn. And of course, traditionally, when the last people and the last pair hit their seconds and move forward, the gallery galloped down. How many times have we seen that scene? And when Tony Jacklin won, he lost a shoe. Several of them we thought we'd lost forever, but uh, all very good natured, they're all lined up there. But I wonder who it's going to be. He's one ahead at the moment. Alex, you're a, you're a bit of a gambling man. If you had to put uh, something down now, what do you think? There's well, my tips uh, originally were Tiger Woods and Jim Furyk, so I haven't done too badly, have I? First I've heard of it. <laughs> yes, well, you, you always say that. First I've heard of it. Now, look, I, I'm going to produce from my wallet a little envelope which is written inside what I said. But, you know, don't let's count out the ones back on 17 because... Uh, Brian Watts can easily hit that green and get a birdie. Or an eagle. Or an eagle and take the lead. Here he is. If he gets a three here, he'll be in the lead and have a shot to spare. But the pin is up the left-hand side. He's got a little lofted wood here, like a little baffy, a four. See if he can draw it in. Two hundred and sixty-five yards. And he's on the open side, and a bit short. The wind dying away, 547 yards. Suddenly it's playing its uh, almost its full length. Certainly for mere mortals it is. But Jesper, he can get up with this little fluke in iron. Three over. He's to hook in. He could do something with an eagle. If that's turning, it's not turning enough. Oh, no. Well, I wonder what Omir is thinking up ahead. Well, he's got a mid iron. Looks like a five iron, can't be certain. And that's a great shot. A beautiful shot. And that uh, two putts from there, and he's beaten everybody then that has completed. And just two left out on the course. Jim Furick here at uh, two over, basically has to hold this. Sometimes with these big heads on these modern clubs, it's hard to get the exact club, but I can only suggest it's about a seven. And the curse of Royal Birkdale, as far as British players winning here, continues in this championship. Another one will slip by without a home winner. See the flag fluttering just below that tower. Oh, greeted with stony silence. That be in the sand. Oh no, no, he's short and left. It, it was quite a lofted club he had in his hand for the distance he had to cover. 
Well, there'll be quite a welcome for these two. One and one might be the open champion in a few moments. Might add that to the United States Masters title. Well, there'll be a lot of professionals watching at home, long retired, who will be looking at these scenes and wondering and uh, being totally amazed by the way the game has changed. Back to the 17th, and this is going to be a conventional shot. He's not going to try a, f a little chip and run. He's got his most lofted wedge here. He's coming in from the open side. Green, the pin is comfortably up the green. Now remember, he's uh, he's only one shot behind, and the birdie here can tie him. It looked for a moment as though it might take a little bit of a bite to about its second bounce, and then it decided to ignore that, and then I think it maybe got a little bit of a downslope and just taken it 12 feet past, maybe 15 feet. Furyk and O'Meara, the 18th Furyk, mishit his second or misjudged it or did something. He's ended up here. This was almost a spot. You remember young Sevy chip between the bunkers? This time he flips it over the top of the bunker. That's the sort of length of putt he's had three or four of those. Hasn't managed to get one in yet. So he'll he'll have much to think about tonight, what might have been. I'm sure he'll be back again though, Fury. Coming up to quarter past six, and all is still. Are you going to live in Mallet with the baby? <laughs> well, if Amira could hold this, I have a feeling that might do it. We want <laughs> weepy willow. We want well, he's keeping the excitement going. If there's a tie, the players will go to the 15th, the power five, and play 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. And if they're still tied, it will be a sudden death. Furyk has this putt to finish at two over par. Great.
Eight shear rings out from back down the course. And this is what the cheer was for. Brian Watts for a birdie at the 17th to tie the lead. And that was the roar that disturbed Jim Furyk at the 18th. And now Mark Amira has a putt, but it's Furyk first. At last. Well, that was for a four round of 70. Uh, so near and yet so far. Now, uh, Omira has a putt for a four. He and Watts are tied at level par. It's certainly a missable one. Doesn't usually miss these, I can tell you, but. No, solid as a rock. Oh, you frightened me there, boss. You frightened me. Four birdies on the inward nine, six birdies altogether. 68. Now he has to wait to see if Brian Watts can get par four at the last. If he can, it'll be a playoff. If Jesper Parnovic holds his second shot at the last, that could add to the drama. He's gone back down, I think, to see his wife. He's into the Scorer's hut there. What a moment for this young fellow, eh, Alex? Oh, yes. Well, he's, he's that was a, a wonderful uh, recovery there. He played that 17th there, playing short and safe to open the green up. A chip that went a little too far, but a great, courageous spot. Now he's got to ask himself to keep that rhythm. He must keep the rhythm. It stayed with him for the last two days through a gale of wind yesterday. It's 73 yesterday. He scores, in fact, 68, 69, and 73 yesterday. And for a man that couldn't get his card in the United States, you wonder why. He's had a par at this 18th hole on all three days. And he just has to get a birdie today to win the championship and a par to be in the playoff. Tiger Woods, is, uh, for his fans, is not going to make the playoff. He was one over. There is Tiger. Tiger, who was waiting to see. He'll be very pleased, of course, if he couldn't win it, that Amira might still do it. Ah. One more good drive. The bunker on the right, that great yellow score bar, just a bit left of that would do. He's got the driver. Taking the thin line, is he? Oh. Well, he's in the rough. Just gone through the fairway, has he? That, uh, well, it's all within his grasp now. Parnovic now is only two over. He got uh, his four, but he might, who knows, he might drive and hold his second shot here. Such things have happened before. Ooh, what, what Brian Watts wouldn't have given for that one. Oh, we have a lack of time for a drink. Paul McKenzie, no, it's not. I thought, yeah, 
but he got a spare time job. The gallant old doctor, well, just hold on for me. I'll just be with you in a second or two. Well, unfortunately, not a very good lie for Brian Watts down the left-hand side of the fairway. 185 to go to the front, and I think it'll be a very good shot if he gets it there. Uh, bunker ahead of him, about 100 yards. I think he can carry that okay. But it's uh, for 185 yards, uh, getting on 200 yards the flag, we're talking a four iron. Five iron maybe, uh, perhaps six iron with a bit of adrenaline, but the ball is really not that good. Well, the, this young man played very sensibly and safely at uh, 17. He took it into the open side, made the pitch available. There's Mark O'Meara, who can only wait, keep warm, in case he's involved in a playoff. And Brian Watts, it may be a, a matter of another pitch and a putt. Jesper, who hit the most beautiful tee shot. And there, the referee with this match, Gordon Huddy. And all the marshals and the burgundy jackets there will probably move up with that rope and contain the gallery as it comes forward. I think that there they lift the rope now and I think that'll be the plan. Yes, up comes the rope and if we all move forward quietly we'll be either that or we all wait here for yes, there's a, an orchestra leader there containing them. Now there's a big screen in the distance. Well, they're watching that. Very good innovation. There we are, boys and girls. Hope you're enjoying it. It's been great to have you with us. And now the final scenes. Or will there be more? There's more, there's more. Well, Beverly told us that it's not a very good lie and the chances of him chasing it up onto the green would appear to be pretty slim. You can see that he's got to get over that first bunk and then he's going to play into this stretch of fairway. Working out the yardages. I think it's just a question of, of what the best club he can get on it, on it, the most sensible club. He's already won one major this year, O'Meara. But Parnovic is going to have a go. A crosswind, you can see the flags up on the grandstand on the right and left, uh, just letting you know which side. That's good for this shot because if he start, starts it out on the right that will blow it in towards the pin position which is to the left. Uh, Parnovic hits them very hard. This could be as little as a six iron. I think that's a pretty good shot. It is a great shot. Yes, yeah, a good shot. Right over the flag. He's two over. He he had to hold it. And he had the line right, but he couldn't quite get the distance perfect. Danger here is being a little greedy. I think he's taken a bit more loft and he's going to play for a position, Peter. Yes, he doesn't want to sort of put it into another dreadful place. The great thing here is he's got to get it in a position where he's got at least uh, a 
decent position to chip it up onto the green and maybe get his putt in. That was to be a fairly lofted club. He's got to get over the, the bunker in front and then keep it straight. So the top window, the main windows of the clubhouse, the left-hand sort of top row, middle left of that's a good line. Looks very calm. Had a horrid feeling then he was going to say the ball moved. Now he's got a grip nice and firm, a little bit tighter. Keep the body still, drive it through. Oh, and that's just top. He could nearly have got that on the front of the green. Well, he's still smiling. That's left him an awkward one because he's so near the back of the bunker and the bunker is narrow. He'll need to conjure up a bit of magic from there to get it close. So the final pair. He's he's waiting. He's thinking about it. There's the old engraver, the magic man with the chisel. I'm sure it's not called a chisel. By this time, he usually knows who's won, and he's started on it. Good job for him, Peter Oosthuis never won because he'd have, he'd have filled the whole band. Mark Kalkovecchia, yeah, that was a pretty, that was a lot of uh, names to put on there, a lot of letters. It'll be what's from the front. Just at the back of the green is Parnovic. And let's see how he, how he gets into this. See, it's awkward, it's a horrid stance. Now he's got to keep his body level. Just hands and arms, and this is this calls for a great degree of skill and a, a touch of luck. He's got down in two from bunkers a million times, but never one as important as this. What do you think, Alec? Well, he's got to pick the backswing up very sharply here, Peter, not catch it there. And then, well, there's such a lot at stake. Oh, a nice bounce. Oh, that... <laughs> it's... Excuse me. Oh, that's good. Well, I've seen some shots. When the ball pitched and kicked to the right, it was on the perfect line. It was just one of those things, almost a, well, we'll have to see whether it's a touch of destiny or not. 
Let's have a look again. Watch when the ball lands. He's aiming just left of the flag. Now watch it. Catches that there. Just threw it down and towards the hole. And the result, well, he's only a few inches from the hole, a certain four, and that's a playoff. That really was a magical shot. And you'd have to say that's the sh shot of the championship after young Justin had holed out. But uh, that, under these circumstances, was quite magical. I wish when you asked me I'd said it was a pretty straightforward shot. I really thought it was difficult. Now, Parnovic, who has given so much in these Open Championships, so close it seems almost every year, Turnberry, Royal Troon, chances to win, and he's seen this one slip away as well. This is for a three. If he'd hold that, he'd have just been one shot shy. He'll finish off as quickly as he can, knowing that it's all gone. We, we don't like to talk money too much, but the first prize being £300,000. And as you go down, and Jesper has the putt to share. At two under. Fortunately, one of those at two under is an amateur, so he's not going to take any of the money. He's going to get a wee silver medal. As for a four. Well done. Well done, Jesper Parnovic. You give it everything. You always do. And you've finished joint fourth. And now this little putt, this very important little putt to tie with Mark Amira and force the playoff. A round of 70. Well done. Level par today. 68, 69, 73 in the gale and a par 70 to finish. Very good golf, Peter. Excellent. Excellent. And now they just go and check on the scores and then they go across to the 15th. At the 15th hole, it will be decided over the 15th, 16th, 17th and 18th holes. In the event of a further tie, the winner will be decided by sudden death over the 18th hole only. The results of each hole will be relayed to those of you who wish to remain in the grandstand at the 18th after each hole. Thank you very much. David Hill making the announcement to the vast crowd here as to uh, what is going on. And this is was a, a very bold step by the RNA some years ago to introduce a, a playoff uh, the United States Golf Association still continue to have an 18-hole playoff, so under their rules we'd have all come back tomorrow and there would have been a, an 18-hole playoff, which is a bit anticlimactic, but uh, well, that's the way they do it. So Michael Benalek, newly knighted on the right there, and well, Mira looks very cool and calm. They're going to uh, be driven out to the 15th. As I say, the, uh, it lends a tremendous excitement to the occasion. Some purists might say, oh, well, they should play 18 holes. Some would say 36. Others would say, well, they should play another 72. They tried that years ago, and the, p the pair of them tied again and then went into sudden death, so they might just as well have done that in the beginning. But it's, um, it's a, it was a bold step, and I think it gets the winner in. You might say, if, you, if you're not the winner, that you get a bit frustrated, disappointed, well... I was unlucky, but you know the rules. It's four holes. The one with the lowest score is the champion, so if you get a, a three on the first, the other fellow took five, it's not over. Four holes medal, and then if they are tied, it will be sudden death solely down the 18th hole. Just take a few minutes to settle, Alex. Yes, indeed, and if my memory serves me right, this uh, system was started when... Mark Kalkavecchia won at uh, Royal Troon in 1989, remember, with Greg Norman and uh, 
I off. certainly do. You remember that? And Greg Norman went off like a like a train, and we thought he'd won it. And of course, he failed at the 18th. Yes, he. It was certainly it certainly looked as if it was going to be his championship. And just checking all the scores inside, making absolutely certain everything's perfectly in order. Well, a tremendous week for Brian Watts. We haven't had a, thought you might say, uh, well, he hasn't won it yet, but if he has, looking back, uh, Bill Rogers, who won at uh, Royal St. George's some time ago, was a, well, he was a, a new fella. He, he sort of surprised everybody. And on the home front, of course, we had Dick Burton, who won the championship in 1939. In the 30s, there were one or two home-born uh, bred players who won. Alf Perry was a surprise when he won at Muirfield. One or two of them. But I was saying before, the old pros at home watching, and uh, although I mentioned him before, I had a, a fax in to say that Charlie Ward living down there in Torquay, 87 Charlie, I can't believe that, 15 over fours. That really, uh, and still going strong, I'm delighted to hear. Charlie Ward, if you look up the record books, he finished in the top six about eight or ten times in the early late 40s early 50s mrs o'meara there trying to look calm the children dad's doing all right now leave him alone don't worry he's busy for the minute he's just busy you can have an ice cream oh what goes on behind closed doors Way around the corner to the clubhouse, reporters waiting for a quick word. Everyone anxiously waiting on the 15th. The clock ticks on. <laughs> just, a f just a few minutes before the players will come out and then they have to drive over to the 15th. Well, level par, that's 280. Very strict par, wasn't it, 70? Particularly with the weather we've had. Tiger Woods gave us tremendous excitement today. He'll look back and think, ooh, I had so many chances. Raymond Russell, who's done really nothing this year, came in wonderfully well. And young Justin Rose, toast of England, finished off in great style, holding out from about 80 yards or so at the final hole. But again, it's the United States uh, who have dominated this event. We've had Peter Thompson, of course, has won here, and Ian Baker Finch. But uh, Cosentino Rocca had another 70 today, a 70 yesterday under those foul conditions, pulled him right up the leaderboard, 286. Thomas Bjorn a 71. And really, uh, the 15, the top 15 qualify for next year, they get free exemption, and I reckon it's running at about nine over par. So anyone at nine over or better will be relieved to know that they are exempt for next year's championship. Curtis Strange, Robert Allenby, VJ just missed by one uh, on that qualification merit. There are other ways they could get in. Mark James and Sandy Lowe, they had some good moments, as did Lee Jansen, but at the end of the day, they took too many. Sam Torrance is 70 today. Incidentally, Sam, you might tell your father, a lady's written to me, she said she was staying with her husband in San Rocky, and your father asked her to have a dance, which she did, and it was enjoyed, and in return, he was going to give her a lesson the next morning. She turned up at half past eight, your old man never appeared, and she's looking for him. So you better warn him, she's on the move, and I think he ought to honor that engagement. I'll post on the letter. There's the name of the amateur champion, Sergio Garcia, the youngster who's only 18 years of age as well and uh, to get round today in 72 at only a few shots uh, away from winning, but two great amateur performances there. 
Uh... Didier De Voet uh, from Belgium, the other amateur who also did very well today. Uh, Michael Banalek comes out with the chairman of the championship committee, Mr. Hugh Campbell. Bringing in the law. A lot of people will stay in the grandstands. There'll be, there, there'll be announcements after each hole, so it's not a sudden death playoff, and that's nice. It means that you uh, you know they're going to come up the 18th eventually, and still the date's on it. They've got the date carved, and uh, they have to wait. Amira, Amira or Watts. And there it is after all the holes are completed in Tiger Woods. Well, he'll, on his way home to America, have a lot of time to think of the putts that he missed and the mistakes he made. Raymond Russell, on his way back to Scotland, I think can feel justly proud that he only finished two shots away. And the young English amateur, who will be a professional uh, by the next week anyway, I don't think he'll have any regrets that he didn't take the money. But what a performance from him. Uh, they're all down. There's Gordon Huddy. It'll probably be just uh, a moment whilst the Gordon Huddy, who's the referee with the match, whether they toss up to see who goes first. They're all at the 15th tee. And the nice thing about the people who have stayed there, waited in the grandstands, uh, they'll, get, they'll get the results of each uh, hole as it unfolds. It's not a sudden death playoff, so they're bound to come up the 18th. And after that, it's up and down the 18th. Now, I don't know what's causing a delay. There's a gentleman with his television. Two, oh, one's got a hat on. That's you with a hat on. Yes, that's you. Yes, there you are. You've been on the telly and looking at the telly. Wonderful, isn't it? Took me 14 years to be seen on the telly. 14 years with the BBC, never seen. Now, Mark O'Meara just gathering. He's waited a little while. There's Justin Rose. The medal, the silver medal. And some people may say, fancy, that's all he got when he could have had hundreds of thousands of pounds but he will settle for that I can assure you he's a great he's a great credit to the amateur game still they wait I can't think why maybe Mr. Watts hasn't made it to the tee he had to complete his car here he comes just time for a quick snack there he is. I think it's a wee bit unsettling bumping about uh, Peter on a buggy on your way to the tea, but there's no other way really. <laughs> well, it depends what you've got in your tum. He's got his uh, sweeties and uh, he just kept his opponent waiting just a few moments. Walter Hagen, the old great American, used, they say, used to do that on purpose. He's a great one for in there for the old b bottle of something. O'Meara, though, is an old campaigner. Well, we've got two par fives, the 15th and the 17th. 
See, and I wonder if eating that has just uh, upset his equilibrium. Head and a tail. It's missed. It. <laughs> Mark Amir it is to hit the opening tee shot in this four hole playoff. Really came, although he was hanging around, he really came, well, not from nowhere, that wouldn't be fair to say, but it was the run of, of uh, birdies from 11th, from the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. In the space of three holes, he got right into it. Hung on, and others fell away. Well, he's actually okay. He's in the semi-rough, about 10 feet in, but we can see it from here. It is a par five. He was unable to reach the green uh, first time round. I wonder if he wins this, if he'll get a card to get on the American tour. He's tried so often and not made it. Has to play in Japan. He'd be pretty welcome here, I think. He's maintained a beautiful rhythm, but he's cut that one to the right. Oh, and oh, and that. Oh, well, we can see it from uh, about a couple of hundred feet up, but down there, I think it's pretty nasty. And there's no way of get to the green from there. Well, I'm not sure either of them can get to the green from there. It's quite extraordinary what people do. He's been chewing away. I think he had a mouthful of sandwich whilst he was on the backswing there. This 15th hole, 544 yards. They're both over on the right, about level with these bunkers over there on the right-hand side. And uh, Watts has to be careful that he avoids these bunkers up ahead. I think Amira has the better lie. We'll find out in a moment. And uh, there is the green with the bunkers at the front, slightly raised. And the flag right towards the back of the green. Gary Wollstonehome is still with us. He's out there. Gary, what's the odds on getting out and on or near? Well, uh, Brian Watts um, actually hasn't finished too badly there. He's, the ball is lying on top of the rough and uh, not in it, so he should be able to make fairly good progress up the fairway. Um, he's certainly not going to have a go for the green, or I'd be very surprised if he tried. Um, what he'd be trying to do is finish in a, a nice position in between where the bunkers are, or just short, to line him up uh, with a reasonable approach shot. What sort of club do you think he can get at it? Well, I mean, really, he could almost... He could almost get a, a little sort of cleek type uh, five wood or something like that. But uh, to be honest, I don't think he's even going to try and do that. He'll probably just play a, a nine or an eight iron up the fairway and leave himself with a reasonable approach shot. Omir, on the other hand, actually has got a very good lie and should be able to uh, uh, certainly get it uh, over the bunkers in the middle of the fairway and leave himself with uh, just a very short iron into the green. The voice of Gary Wollstonehome. One of Britain's finest amateur players, Walker Cup, of course, saw off Tiger Woods down at Royal Fourth Call. The Tiger, who gave us tremendous excitement today, he really is an electrifying player to watch. Hope we see lots more of him in the years ahead. As we look up ahead there and over the bunkers to the sort of 60, 70 yard run in from the bunkers to the green, this is uh, one of the greens that was not just uh, relayed but uh, redesigned. So it has a few undulations at the, the back. Amira has had uh, fives at this hole in all four rounds. Watts has had one birdie and three fives. So it hasn't been a, an outstanding hole. For them, unless you say that par is outstanding, but others have had much less. And wispy grass, and it's been been very wet. 
but not bad now. Well, I've checked the yardage for Brian Watts' uh, uh, shot here. He actually only has 155 uh, uh, sort of yards to clear the, uh, the bunkers in the middle of the fairway. I'm still surprised if he'll have a go for it, but uh, he may well be able to clear his over those and uh, uh, give himself a, a reasonable, uh, reasonably short iron in. Well, he's standing quite well below the ball, but he's gone for a five or six iron here. Mustn't hit it heavy. Well, oh, that's a very good shot. Well, very risky one. It pitched level with that bunker. I thought uh, I, I agree with with Gary. That was a very uh, doubtful decision. He, he only had about 15 or 16 paces between those bunkers, but he didn't find trouble. There's O'Meara's ball. Well, if Amiri really gets this uh, three wood, uh, he actually could get very close to the green indeed. He certainly seems very confident, and uh, I like to see a bit of aggression in these circumstances. It's made good contact, and it's certainly a very good shot, very good line. There he is in position A, just in front of the green. Beautiful shot. Well, this, uh, they're on their way to their third shots of this four-hole playoff. Omira well, must be favourite on the experience and on what other other bits and pieces you want to put on it. But uh, strange old things happen at this game. There's the crowd watching the big screen down. They can watch in relative comfort. What distance, Gary, to the flag for Watts? Watts has um, a really quite a nice shot in, 146 yards to the flag, and uh, you know, really, he's got a nice line in. Wind's just very light, so that's not going to affect it too much. Uh, to right and uh, you know, really, with the greens being fairly receptive, he could get this quite close. Yeah. Mind you, Peter, as you well know, under these circumstances. Uh, any good shot uh, it, it is worth huge applause. Well, that was nicely played, quietly played. Oh. Not bad, eh? That was a very nice push for he's 146 yards away. He may well have pushed in a little seven there. He has a wonderful way of uh, playing these shots. As David Rickman, the rules secretary of the RNA, just with him in this match. He has a wonderful way, a bit couples-like. He stands to the ball with his feet uh, off to the left 10 degrees and then hits through well under the chin. And uh, it really makes a nice strike and an accurate way of playing the shots. So long as you keep rhythm. If you stand to the left and get a bit snatchy, the ball will go in the direction of your stance. So, of course, we're looking now way up there where Romira hit a very good second shot, right? The, the crowd gra gradually giving you the shape of where he is. And Watts has gone up, marked his ball, I think, or there's somebody up on. No, that's Almira coming back off the green. I think uh, we'll see Mr. Watts mark it.
beautiful, beautiful uh, third shot he played in. And despite all the rain we've had, you see how the fairways were just in front of Amira. They've got that little brown hue about them. The course is dry so quickly. Well, if Amira gets inside him, he'll have played a good shot. Played a nice shot. I wouldn't like to say whose putt it is first, but whoever it is, if they get it in, oh, I think it'll be Omira. Well, judging from that, this can be very deceptive. What's his caddy? Oh, a point for it's yours. Watts caddy has a youthful look, almost like Justin Rose. You notice, I noticed a very fresh face, very young looking lad uh, caring for Brian Watts. There he is. We're all eating toffees. Well, now, I think the decision has been made. And it's Omira. I often wish they could devise something like this in soccer rather than the penalties. I don't like penalties, shootouts. And this, uh, this rather than sudden death, where you can only make one mistake and it's all over, you get four holes at it, a chance to recover from any hiccup or blunder. Neither of them have made one so far, although Watts has done well to be where he is in three after his tee shot. And wonderful putting stroke. Everything he does is orthodox and simple. Nice birdie four. Well, he's gone all week and never birdied it. He's uh, chosen to do it now. Not a bad time. He's a cool customer. The way he finished off, remember, at Augusta, we, BBC covered Augusta, the putt down the 72nd green for a three to win. And I think that's why he's been able to help Tiger Woods so much, his tremendous experience. Now, again, stands to the left. Looks very relaxed, just like a quiet weekend afternoon. Oh. Either he didn't read it or he pushed it a little bit, and so uh, Amira has the advantage of one stroke. What's his level par? Amira, one under. Now off they go to the 16th tee. Nerves a bit raw, Alex, eh? Quite a long walk to the 16th tee. And uh, Mira has the, has drawn first blood. 
Round the corner we go. An elevated green. And the conditions are, are getting very calm at the moment. O'Meara's score on this hole, three, five, four, five. So this hasn't been one of his uh, favorite holes. Watts has had four fours. This tee is relatively, relatively new. And you can see the old championship tee there up at the right at a one o'clock. And they stuck this one back. You don't really see a lot of the fairway. Two couple of hundred yards or so to reach the fairway. So this is not his driver. Dead center. What's the familiar setup? Ball teed very high out with the driver. Sweeps it right off the top of the peg. Beauty. Because for Watts to win this championship would really possibly alter his life, hopefully for the better. But of course, he's very successful in uh, Japan. And people marvel at why he plays there. The reason is he's very successful. Have a look at Amira. It's just about as orthodox as you can get. Beautiful grip, lovely turn. Not much from the legs, but a huge wind up. A good, n well over 90 degrees. The shaft just horizontal. Then the transfer of weight. But look at his head position through, under, but a huge extension with the arms, which eventually brings the right side up. And you couldn't get a more balanced swing to look at. Been some interesting swings to look at in this championship. Now, this is the one, young Watts here, Brian Watts, how leisurely it appears to be. A very full turn once again. Not much heel lift on the left, and yet he's got right to the very top of that backswing. You can see the left heel still on the ground. That takes a bit of doing. But now he almost seems to slow and stay wide through the ball. It's an amazing, uncanny sort of sense of timing. And once again, the orthodox finish right through with the left hip carrying the swing. Two very good swingers, great examples. And that one right up the middle. Essential at this 16th that you uh, hit the fairway because of the fact that the pin position is only eight yards up the green. Now, you don't want to be coming out of thick rough. You mustn't be coming out of rough to a pin position that close because you can't get the backspin you require but from the middle of the fairway where they are, both of them can attack it. Well, obviously two very good tee shots, especially under the, the pressure and the circumstances. I think it will be Watts to play first. I make them basically both equidistant. 123 yards to the front and 131 to the flag. A little breeze here from left to right. Really not too much to worry about. Obviously, there are some bunkers on the right-hand side, so if you go at the pin and the wind catches it, could land in net. But uh, at the moment, I'm sure Watts would just be happy to get this on the green. <coughs> get it on the green first. That's the old match play tactics, isn't it? Get your blow in first and let the opposition worry then. So the Amira, very experienced golfer. I'm sure he won't be worried too much. 
10 birdies today. That's all it's yielded, and 34 during the entire championship. Another angry looking sky in the background. Watts, 32 years of age, Amira, 41, and uh, well over, he's won 15 times on the US tour, has Amira, but it wasn't until this year he won one of the majors. Mm -hmm. You don't like the way. <coughs> I was uh, 24 more yards than last time. In total. Yeah. I didn't even get into the hole. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I agree. They agree. He agrees. Big moments for Brian Watts. He's one behind already. Pushing in the nine iron. Played it. Beautiful shot earlier, got very close to the flag and then spun back. That's a good one. Perfect length. Probably a little bit further than it looks there, with 12 feet. I think that looked very much like a 9 iron. I think both players used the same numbered club and similar results, just one on either side of the pin, but not much in it again. But again, I think Mamira will be putting first. Now, in the four days, Amira has had one birdie and two bogeys, and Watts has uh, had four straight pars. So there you go. Whatever these statistics mean, both of them have a putt for a three. Playing for the prize money, 112,000 pounds difference in prize money, 300 to 188. But that really, the prize money is just the tip of the iceberg because fame and fortune awaits for a short period. We've had many players win one, indeed two of the majors and haven't gone on and on and on and on. But uh, for a certainly three, maybe five years, uh, they gather around them great trappings of wealth. So, that's why I say, uh, Omira has already drunk from the golden gourd. Well, he used that uh, to his advantage at the, the last hole, and it's it's always the case. If you can get that putt in, suddenly the thing shrinks for the other man. That's exactly what happened at uh, 15. The advantage, of course, that uh, Watts has is they're, they're on a similar line. You can watch what happens when it comes across the hole, Amira's ball. If there's any sort of serious deviation of direction, he'll have that advantage in seeing it. Because when he played earlier, he came straight up the green. This time he's coming across it. Now let's have a little look. Is it going to come a wee bit left or right? That's this general slope of the land would suggest it should. Yes, he's gone left to right and missed it. Yes, now that's exactly uh, what uh, Mr. Watts would be watching for, that sudden drop past the hole. Oh, 
Gee whiz. Didn't know he'd gone that far past. There could be a swift turnaround here. He's left himself three and a half feet. Stunned silence. Now watch this putt is going to have a right to left break. And this to squ certainly square things and who knows. Just aims his feet left, but lovely stroke. So he missed it on the low side as well. Now he'll go on and finish if he if he fancies doing so, because uh, if you're able, you're allowed to be continuous. You're putting. And you'll want to dispatch this and let Mark Amira have one. And it's his four. <laughs> Not like match play. You can't give but You can't concede things. This is still tournament medal play. And so Mark Amira, so long as not too many spectators go rushing off to the uh, 17th tee, they must all keep still. Just right half. He's such a proficient player in every department of the game. So he still has a one-shot lead as they, as they have two holes to play. Not far to walk across to the 17th. And match play by score, really. Match play by medal there. The, the tee just back and right of the 16th green. And if you've just tuned in and wondering what's going on, we've had a playoff here for the Open Championship this year at Royal Birkdale between Marco Mira and Brian Watts, both players from the United States. Uh, they finished at level par and the playoff is over four holes. They've completed two. Two more to go, and this man, O'Meara, is one ahead. Thank you. Drives very important. Thank you very much. had a three, a five, no, no, sorry, he's had a four, a three. Oh, he's played this hole very well, O'Meara. One eagle and three birdies. Not great enthusiasm up there, but I don't know why not, because that's a beautiful drive. Hello. Watts has had a four here on his previous four visits. He's pushed it a whisker. Ah, uh, just didn't shoot in off that bank. I don't know whether he'll be able to reach the green from there. We'll have a report from Gary Wilson in a minute. Poor old Brian Watts is, uh, it, that is just the worst break in the world. He's got virtually an unplayable lie. Uh, he hit it right and it's just caught the bank and it's just dropped down into the deepest hole you've ever seen. It's, um, 
it's just sort of rough and if he can make contact he's going to do well he certainly isn't going to be able to uh, uh, make much progress down the fairway and that certainly looks as though it's game set and match to Amira. It's not in, if you say it's in a hole, Gary, could it be, could he get a free drop? Is it in any sort of burrowing no, animal hole? No, it isn't, hole? no. It's just, it's, just a, it's just a hole full of rough. <laughs> a hole full of rough. Captain of the club striding out there. And this 17th hole, well, seen a bit of drama here. A new tee position so that the players can go through the gap. And then just turn slightly there. 547 yards, a remodeled green with a big step right through the middle of it. And we haven't really seen the wind coming from this direction. I've seen this hole play two woods. There's the Capitan in the white shirt striding out. What a wonderful job he's done. Peter Rosten with his committees, various committees, the captain, pro, secretary, the whole lot of them have worked wonders here. They've put on a splendid, splendid, splendid gang of workers. Well, Amira trying to look calm, walking past. I won't bother to go and look at his. I'll show him I really don't care. But poor old Watts. I wonder if he'll call in the referee and ask for an opinion or whether it's just a horrid place. in there he's got a he's got to shift it uh, fairly well alex to, to reach the green in three i reckon yes i i think that these fellows have such power and 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 he will smash it forward and if with a bit of luck it might jump 40 or 50 yards up the fairway he's got to have a go at it no good deeming it unplayable and dropping clear which he'd be entitled to do. You could get two club lengths from there, but then he'd be playing three from here, and he certainly can't reach. If he can advance it 40 yards, he's much better off, and I think he probably will. That's what he's done. So now he's uh, probably able to get to the green. Those strange things happen in golf. He was in... Uh, the rough on the first time round and got a birdie and he just shook his left hand there I think that took quite an impact and I'm not sure if he's in range or not we'll find out maybe him to play again Gary does he have to play again first? yes he does definitely Peter what? he's uh, he's got uh, something in the region of 280 yards to the pin not unreasonable to expect that he could get it somewhere nearby the winds off the right um, and not really helping but it'll be a hell of a shot to uh, get it on the green. Well. Lee Jensen does that, you know, stands behind and points the club. that looked to be going out to the right well obviously he had a, a, a go at trying to reach the green and just came off it a touch and uh, really he's in the rough again but uh, I think it'll all depend now on what Amira does with this uh, uh, second shot as to what he can try and do with his well, we can see Omira now just is pushing it down the fairway with an iron. Perhaps he can reach with an iron. It'd be a big shot. Well, 
Well, he's struck that beautifully, got right to it, a raking iron. There he is, he's still short, but in pole position, just 30, 40 yards short of the, of the green, perhaps 55 yards or so from the flag. He's there in two, safe. Watts in trouble again, having played three. I think, Peter, that was the absolute correct thing for Amira to do. He's got a one-shot advantage already. Uh, to, to have taken a wood and tried to attack and got in trouble was, would have been a bit senseless, and he's not that sort of player. But he played a beautiful draw shot there, set it out to the right, swinging it in safely towards the green line, leaving the open shot to the pin for the third shot. He's done everything tactically correct that he could do. Eighteenth green, people waiting for the gladiators to appear in front of the clubhouse and down in the little dip and then a newly sculpted eighteenth green and not many people left the stands, they're waiting well this many did. One ahead, very much in the driving seat. Pasted out. So he knows exactly how far he's got to go, where to pitch it. Watts is about to play his fourth shot. Well, it is Watts' turn uh, to play his fourth shot. Um, it's not lined too badly, and he's got a bit of room to work with at the uh, front of the green. It's really a fairly straightforward pitch and run, as long as he gets the ball going on line to start with. Well, he's given himself uh, the opportunity, a putt for a par. That's uh, the best he could do. Amira with the direct line to the flag. Pretty lofted club, sand iron or a lob wedge. And once again, it's Samira who will be putting first, as it's been on the other holes. But this time, it's slightly different. He has a putt for a birdie four. The opponent, well, he's got a putt for a par. Not many players have held the uh, two titles in the same year. Alex, I'm, I've been reminded that uh, Gary Player in 74 held two of the major titles. Jack Nicholas, I think, also. I'm sure he did. He must have done. He did everything, did Jack. Hmm. It's funny, isn't it? At this time of the evening, it's uh, half past seven. It suddenly becomes the best bit of the day. The wind the tides, is gone. Eh? The tide is turned, yes. yes. Turns every six hours, you know. Every six? Mm -hmm. Mm. Six to come in, six to go out. I see. 
<laughs> Never changes. We used to wonder on the first of fourth that if it came in on on our side, did it did it go out on five? But it partly does it both at the same time. Mm, they're pretty bright up there. In your day, anyway. Now, a mirror for a, a birdie. And this would seal it, I think, if he can get this in. Oh, swung away at the death. So, par five. And what still lives? <laughs> now, once again, he had the opportunity of seeing a putt come from the other side of the hole. The nearest ball turned away to the right. And uh, this happened at the 15th. He had a a lesson to learn and didn't quite take it, but he'll be here. They might have this hole, and the mirror would then carry just the one shot lead to the 18th tee. So there's a lot at stake here. If he misses this and the mirror takes two shot advantage, well, he's got his work cut out. You're just aiming off, you can see. What a putt, what a five. How can a man with this temperament not be able to get a card on the United States tour, Peter? Had five goes at it, Alex, and didn't manage it, and then took his talents to Japan, where he is, uh, he's very successful. Very successful indeed. Up they come, the old snappers. When you go up steep hills, you know, you should bend forward, lower the, lower your head so your heart doesn't have to pump the blood so far. Kneel down. He was a good player. <laughs> Irish fella. Little metal spoon there, little metal three. That was a pointed remark. Well, he has a point, too. And he's happy with it. One ahead, safely in play. Now this is uh, where Watts hit it in the rough. He's got a metal three here. I'm not sure he didn't use a driver first time round. Right? Like that familiar standing behind, just aligning the shaft up, almost splitting the fairway. See the line, bunker on the right, teed quite high for a metal three. And that is a very good shot. There's the bunker that's caused them to play all sorts of uh, devious routes. That one on the right. But now he's in a perfect place. That bunker that I referred to is uh, 173 yards from the green. All those tents have to be taken down. <laughs> That's a job for somebody, isn't it? Those lads that have been taking the scaffolding, the half scaffolding, they'll be probably on their way back from Loch Lomond now coming back here to dismantle this lot. 
takes four or five weeks. Well, Watts found the fairway this time. Of course, that's uh, on the 72nd hole. He went into the rough on the left, and the three wood was the best club, I think, because the wind has got up a little bit now. That was downwind and from the right. You may be able to see a red spot on the fairway. I don't know if you can, but that's 185 yards to the front. So that tells you what he's got there, and the pin 27 on. So certainly an easier shot this time round for him than last. Who do you think to play first? Certainly Watts yeah. to play first. Amira is about four yards ahead of him. He'll be a little bit to uh, have a blind shot, Amira. He's coming in over the left bunker, the fairway bunker. That isn't a problem, but uh, just not quite such a clear view of the shot. Watts looking right down the barrel of this one. Well, if Watts can get his blow in, he's one behind, remember. He will play into the green first. And just a good shot can put some pressure on Amira. All our distinguished committee men. All in. John Glover there on the left, a well-known international in days gone by, was in charge of the rules at the RNA for many years. Michael Lunt in the background there with the glasses, recently retired secretary from Royal Mid Surrey. They do a wonderful job, the RNA. They don't have all that many paid employees. Very small, in fact, compared to other major associations. And as Lenny Longhurst used to say, nothing better than having an organization run by glorious amateurs with no ax to grind. And he was right. You can disagree with them on occasion, but then they do precisely what they wish. But they they run a tight and good ship. Yeah, ten to fifteen. Ten plus eighty-four This could well be the most important shot of his life. Sweating up in the paddock a bit. Trust it now. Trust it, trust it, trust your swing, trust the club. You've hit these a thousand, tens of thousands of times. Just keep your rhythm, balance, posture. Just take a line, swing through, keep your powder dry. Quiet, please. Tweaked it. He's bounced it. No, he didn't. He was trying to reach it right into the into the green, and that's well. It may may be a slightly awkward stance again. O'Meara must surely go. I think if you get that five out there and draw it, it's gonna be get fun. that five out there and draw it. Aim it just left of the clock, Gunner, and give it a right good whack. Yeah. Just a nice one. Just yeah, if you get it just out there to the right, you're gonna hit it back into the wind. Yeah. There's a little more wind right to left than we think. Yeah. Like I said, get your spot. Yeah. That's wonderful, isn't it? The banter between them. Okay. Oh, look at that. He drew that in. What a corker.
Oh, that was a glorious, glorious shot. Well, it looks odds on now. Amir is going to win this championship and join Jack Nicholas, who won the Masters in the Open in 66, Lee Trevino, who won the Open, uh, US Open and the R Open in 71, and Faldo, who won the Masters and the Open in 1990. Wonderful ovation there for the two players. And it's not over yet. There's all sorts of quirky things can happen. They're edging their way forward, being held back by that little rope and a few good men and true. If someone said charge, now they'd be off. Now, a little bunker shot. Picture's going to be sent all over the world. Snappers from the four corners of the golfing world. What do you think, Alex, then? A little dabber from here? Well, he's in a different bunker to the one he was on uh, when he came up originally. He's in the second bunker. He's got a much better lie. He put it stiff from a difficult lie. That doesn't mean a lot. But he's now on the world stage even if he doesn't win here. Normal circumstances, you'd expect us to go very close. He's got to hold it, really. Oh, I think he jabbed it, shot away a bit too fast, and that's going off the back. And Amira will have two for it now. No matter what Watts does. Amira's ball just off the green. Some five or six steps from the hole. So a little bit of an anticlimax, really. Watts started the playoff so well with a, having a short putt for a birdie four, which he didn't get. So I'm sure the ingre there he is, beavering away already. like my dentist. I think there, Peter, just, just for once, the, the slow strike deserted uh, Brian Watts. He's played everything through the ball so slowly. I mean, we, we're not close enough to see exactly how it lay, but he just seemed to hurry at the last moment. Now the new undulated green at the back. It didn't used to be like this. It was with straight slope. He's got to come up and out of this hollow. If this goes in, there'll be a roar. Five, four, five, five. That's one over. So, Amira, two putts for the championship. He's not short. 
what? He's, oh, it's all very well to have a smile. Mm. Oh, he's got two more putts now, of course, because what's missed? So really, no wonder he smiles. I'd rush down and risk it now from there. Well, perhaps not. 20 years ago, I would. Two putts for the championship. Yeah, oh, well done. Well done, Mark O'Meara. Gallant Brian Watts. So we'll hear from him again. Referee there on the right, Gordon Huddy. And well done, Dad. His junior coming on. Hey, Dad, what are you doing, Dad? Hey, my little sweetheart. Yes. An extraordinary game it is, to be sure. He was sort of hanging around until he got to about the 11th this afternoon, and then suddenly he birdied the 11th, the 12th. 14th, 15th, 14th, the 17th, and the others sort of fell away, and suddenly he was in the playoff, and he was just that much too good for Brian Watts. Just the final rites of signing bits of paper to say everything has been done according to order and then the presentation party will come out and the trophy and the jet, the engraver working away, very close, fine work, beautifully done. Uh, just it takes him a few minutes. Of course, he's got the year on there and the venue, so it's just a question of getting the name. Mark's wife. Another look, and there it was. Mark O'Meara, the Masters Champion, 98, and now the Open Championship, 98. Suddenly, at the age of 41, he's climbed right up the ladder and uh, is spoken, will be spoken, in the same breath as some of golf's greats. Incredible that he, he can actually do this uh, without any sort of magnifying glass. It just shows you what good eyes he's got now. The caddies are being interviewed. The world, everyone all over the world interested. NBC there, ABC have been here covering it for the United States. And the table being set gently on the 18th green. In the great white clubhouse that stands here, just like a great ocean liner. When you're on the main road looking out to sea, that's just what it looks like. And the crowds gather, waiting for the uh, prize-giving ceremony. There'll be some very proud. There he is, Justin Rose, leading amateur, but not just leading amateur. I mean, to the fact that he finished... Uh, joint fourth in the championship and I think and he's not 18 and he's so happy and we're all so happy for him there's no question about that but the minefield lies ahead Alec doesn't it we saw similar scenes with Gordon Sherry then illness took over loss of form loss of confidence things can happen it's just 
the beginning of the dawn. There are many rough days ahead. Garcia there, the amateur champion. Sandy Matheson there on the left, the captain of the RNA. David. The gallant doctor. David Rickman there right in the front, who's been featured in the television coverage, explaining the and rules. He's nearly finished. He's nearly done. Oh, Caddy there, he's, he's earned a nice drink tonight. Brian Watt's wife with a back dress with a black sweater. Lost the car keys. No. <laughs> On top of everything else. No. The two young amateurs. Both, I think, will be turning professional in the relatively near future, although Sergio says not until after the next April. That's eight, nine months ahead. And how they'll be challenging uh, as the years go by. A wonderful feeling there of camaraderie between these two young amateurs, one from Spain, son of a golf professional, and the other who was born in South Africa and uh, moved when he was five years of age to the south of England. They played together, they practiced together, and still the galleries there keep their places in the huge grandstands. Already they will have started dismantling some of the tented villages. Sir Michael Banalak with the trophy, all engraved. <laughs> Nicely done, no spelling errors. Michael Van Alec poised, ready to go out with the trophy and announce the winners. Just hesitating. And come this way, Sir Michael. He's done this a few times before. I think we're just waiting for the contestants, the winners, to stride out. That's the new, uh, that's the Open Championship tie they wear, very similar to the Lord's Taverners and the Berkshire Golf Club, and I'm sure several other clubs. It's a very popular combination of colours, this year's championship tie. Very few weeks since you were telling us how much it meant to you to win your first major. Now, just a few weeks later, you've got two. How special a day is this? Oh, it's an incredible feeling, Doogie. I, I love this championship so dearly. I mean, I've come every year that I've been exempt, and uh, to me, it's a special championship. It's the worldwide championship. Played on difficult links golf course with demanding conditions, with great players and a great field. Uh, to come home on top is just an unbelievable moment for me right now. You hold some wonderful parts today, just as you did at Augusta, but how proud are you of the fact that you had to play a different kind of golf, master very different conditions to win this particular championship? Well, I think that's what makes it very special, and the fact that uh, the weather changed every single day, the golf course played different every single day. Today, you know, the wind came completely different. Uh, the greens were softer from the rain, but still, it was challenging. Holes that you were hitting one iron and a nine iron, now you're hitting driver and a five iron. So. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what Lynx golf is all about, and that's why this championship's so special. You had to wait a little while at the end of 72 to see whether you were going to win it without the playoff. What did you think about in those moments? Did you allow yourself to think that it was all over? No, you can never do that. Uh, Brian Watts is a super player. 
Uh, I know he's a good player. I've played with him. And he had a tremendous bunker shot in the 72nd hole. You can never count the fact that he might even hold it, which he came close to doing. So we got in the playoff, and my game plan was just try to put the ball in the fairway, try to give myself some opportunities, which I did. I drove it well in the playoff, and that really set up the victory for me. You seemed very calm, very much in control, both during the 72 and in the, in the playoff. Did you feel that way? I did, and I told Jerry, my caddy on 18, after I hit my second shot, that I was really amazed at how relaxed I actually was, with especially so much riding on this event. Um, you know, it's just one of those days where things went right for Mark O'Meara, and I'm fortunate to come out on top. Mark, we're delighted for you. Congratulations. Go off and collect the claret, Jack. Thanks, Doogie. Well, a very gracious O'Meara. And here is Sir Michael Benalik with the old and famous claret jug. And there's the winner, the medal for the winner, the amateur trophy. Messrs. Hill, Crew, Huddy, the captain of Royal Birkdale, Hugh Campbell will speak just for a couple of minutes. Captain of the RNA. This is. Hugh Campbell. Mr. Captain of the Royal Birkdale Golf Club, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the presentation ceremony for the 127th Open Golf Championship. There are many elements involved in staging of the Open Golf Championship, and one of the most important is the golf course. On behalf of the Championship Committee, the Royal Ancient Golf Club, I would like to thank the Royal Birkdale Committee and their members for their tremendous effort in restoring their golf course to the magnificent links that we've had available for our championship this week. get them to work on the weather next time. <laughs> the course was presented in wonderful condition, and we are grateful to Chris Whittle and his team for this outstanding achievement. <laughs> Our thanks are also due to all the volunteers, both here and at the regional and final qualifying venues. They contribute so much to the organization of the championship and also to our professional staff under the leadership of Sir Michael Benalik and David Hill. The most important part of any championship is the quality of the players in the field. Over 2,000 players from around the world entered the championship, and a strong international field representing 20 countries took part in the first day of the championship. We have witnessed another exciting finish, and that is an understatement, involving some of the best players in the world, resulting in the amateur medal being won in some style by Justin Rose. championship was, of course, decided uh, by a playoff, and in the playoff, I believe we had a very courageous runner-up in Brian Watt. <laughs> the winner, of course, is an outstanding winner the current Masters champion, Mark Amir. Mark mastered the difficult and varied conditions earlier in the week and won today, I believe, with a fine 68 in the final round. And we congratulate him on his success.
My final thanks are due to you, the spectators. <laughs> you, you provide the background and the atmosphere for these great players to display their skills against, and I know that they appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much. I will now ask Sir Michael Benelic to announce the prize winners and Peter Rostrum, the captain of the Royal Birkdale Golf Club, to present the trophy. Thank you. Second place and winner of the Silver Quake with a score of 280, Brad Watts. The leading amateur and winner of the silver medal with a score of 282, Justin Rose. Basically, all I'd love to say is I've had an incredible amount of support from all you guys this week and you've really pushed me on this week. Thank you very much. The champion golfer of the year and the winner of the gold medal with a score of 280, Mark O'Meara. Wow. Uh, all I can say is a couple of quick words, if you don't mind. First of all, my great congratulations to Justin Rose, 17 years old. Unbelievable tournament. Justin, to you for the low amateur, phenomenal. Congratulations. Also to Brian Watts, my hat goes off to him. He played tremendous golf. The bunker shot on the 72nd hole was evident of that. Congratulations, Brian. To Michael, the RNA, the members of Royal Birkdale here, all I can say is that this golf course has been very, very special to Mark O'Mara and my family. In 1987, I came here and played in the Lawrence Batley. Was fortunate enough to hold off some fierce challengers with a couple of great lucky shots on the backside. 
and uh, came home on top. In 91, I came here, I came to the last hole with Ian Baker Finch. He went on to win this championship, this unbelievable trophy right in front of me. And I remember how proud I was of Ian because he was a close friend of mine. And when he brought the Clariot jug back to Orlando, we actually had a drink out of it. And it was great because I was hoping maybe someday, that if that was as close as I was ever going to get to it, it was a special feeling at that time. And to all the fans and the spectators, what can I say? I mean, of all the championships throughout the world, this, in my, in my opinion, is the most special championship there is. And what makes it so special is all the volunteers and all the marshals and the gallery control, people who work very, very hard for their love of the game, all the spectators, yourself, every one of you out there included, for your love of the game, the standpoint that links golf is pretty much what golf is all about. And I can't tell you how proud I am to be this year's Open Champion. Thank you very much, everyone. So a special little pose for the photographers. Good night and have a safe journey home. So the photographers getting their special photos as the crowds begin to disperse and wend their way home with their own particular memories of this 127th time this championship has been played. Missed out, of course, during the two great wars but uh, it always produces something a bit special. A playoff, not since uh, Daly and Rocker at St Andrews have we had a playoff, but, uh, well, that's only two or three years ago. A very exciting indeed, Watts and O'Meara. Next year, Canoosti. Hope you come and join us. So that's that. Uh, the crowds in a moment will start making their way home. We hope you've enjoyed it wherever you've been watching. It's been a pretty mixed bag, hasn't it? But we have a worthy champion in Mark O'Meara and some wonderful memories to take away. And hopefully we'll see you again when the championship is played next year up on the east coast of Scotland at Canoosti. From Birkdale, goodbye. <laughs>